welcome along, ladies and gentlemen, to Fongamata, beautiful beach on the Coromandel Island of New Zealand, and uh, Jason Pocock. Alongside me, I'm Danny Morrison, and uh, we're here to bring you all the action from what uh, is a fantastic-looking event, and the beach has really turned it on, Jason. It has in uh, year three, which is, is pretty cool, I guess. Only a small wave running today, um, some good conditions, though. Um, a long run. That, r- that run is looking long, man. I'm glad it's not us out there. Yeah, you're right. It is quite small there. The surf conditions aren't huge, but a little bit tricky on the inshore as well. But there's a small gutter uh, right in front of where the start line is, and uh, that's something that the teams are going to have to negotiate and uh, you know really take into consideration when they're heading into the water. But we've got a massive program uh, lined up for us, and um, you know going back to the the draft uh, earlier this year or earlier in the season, and uh, we've got some incredible teams on the line. It's, it's hard to know who um, is going to be coming out on top today. I think we both agreed that it's a pretty deep field. Um, I think it was hard for either of us to see who was going to be there. Uh, I'm sure we had some, some interest around that, particularly around the team moving and the, and the new sort of uh, rule that they put in for team moving. So I'm interested to see what a beach sprinter does as a captain. Um, and then I guess you've just got those old faithfuls. We don't have Claudia Kelly here this year, so um, there will be a new champion. Uh, looking and interested in that. All right, so first event up on the line, we have the mixed ski relay. So two teams from each of our eight uh, teams. That means uh, four competitors, and it is a relay event. So one male and one female ski paddler from each team on the line, and we've got a couple of the girls going first against the boys. Yeah, and this will be interesting because obviously they have a bit of a plan. I think the girls will be looking just to hook into a male paddler that's about the same speed and hoping that their male competitor will get some fresh water in the back but as we go there first um, looks like Lockie Falloon out on that southern side has uh, a good start that's what we would have probably expected from Lockie um, James Scott right next to him um, it's going to be hard then I think is that Reuben Crichton in the middle there um, so the guys we would have expected James Scott out front is going to go over these first two ways and uh, it's going to be hard for these guys in third, fourth, fifth um, to get back onto to James and Lockie now. Yeah, absolutely. And what we've seen that from James Scott just so regularly over the last couple of seasons. Incredibly strong off the beach, always at the front end of the field, and he's just dominated that first 20 strokes off the beach. So a really good effort from James. It's, like you say, Lockie Falloon in two that's trying to chase him down. And then Kalani Gilbertson coming into three, trying to drag, looks like his younger brother, Kaya, um, out into the, the pack as well. So... Uh, um, again, small conditions, these long, flat conditions are going to make a massive difference. What we're seeing at the moment is obviously those fast runners, the likes of James Scott, Lockie Falloon, uh, at the front of the field going into the water. But now we've seen in these flat conditions the strong ski paddlers, the likes of Kalani Gilbertson coming into the mix and uh, using their strengths. Yeah, and I think I want to just have a look back at the, at the back end of the field and look where um, Christy Tate is. Those three teams that had the three girls, they probably didn't quite work out how they wanted to. They've... They've got their own fresh water, which is good, but they definitely don't have that little sort of freight train of, of maybe the rest of the boys to get on. You can see Christy trying to work hard to get on the back of that, but I guess as we start heading home and James Scott still leading the way, Kalani Gilbertson coming up on the inside, giving him plenty of room, so he's going to be able to use his horsepower as we start heading home. Yeah, and a long period swell too. If you have a look at the top of the screen, there's a big gap between swells, so plenty of opportunity for Jags as these guys come back to the beach. And that's what Christy Tate will be thinking. She thinks, I've just got to stay in the mix. I've just got to stay close enough so that when I tag my male paddler, whoever her teammate is, uh, he's going to have a shot at um, potentially mowing down some of the girls that are in front of him. But as they come back to the beach, it looks like Kalani Gilbertson's on a small little runner, starting to pick up some ground on James Scott. James has seen it. He knows he's in a bit of trouble. Uh, but So it's going to be a sprint up to the beach uh, for for the tag to our their female competitors. Yeah, these two are going to that little run just in front, so they're going to get off. And remember, it's about all of the team. So you've got one more runner, but it's also a combined point. So it's not just the first team across the line; it's combined with your first and your second team. So now they get off. James obviously had the better run on the way down, and he is a team captain. So you'd expect there's a little bit of pressure on him. Kalani Gilbertson just trying to stay in there as much as he possibly can. They do it tough, those ski pillars. They don't like running at all. And you can see James coming up to that turning mark. Look at the pain on Kalani Gilbertson's face. He doesn't like this running part at all. So it's going to be James Scott from Team Scott. He's going to be tagging on to Michaela Kitu, uh, Michaela Kitu sorry, uh, for Team Scott. And she's going to take a nice little lead uh, into um, the second leg, uh, followed by... Um, It'll be Zoe Crawford, probably, um, who's been tagged by Kalani Gilbertson. 
Yeah, potentially. Potentially. Oh, no, that's, that's, I don't think Could that be Maggie is. Robinson, that one. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're heading into that second run, and what we've got, we've got one, two, three, four, five uh, teams in the uh, in the water. Young Michaela Kitu from Omanu uh, and racing for Team Scott is out in the lead. Um, she'll be hunted down by a pack of girls that are that are hoping to get on top of her, plus those couple of boys that um, have gone second. But you can see, I think that's Julia Padrett in the middle there. She's coming through. Uh, you'd probably suggest that she's been peddling the best in the early season. So you're going to look for her at some stage soon to go past Michaela Kitu. And if you're young Michaela Kitu, you're thinking, I just want to get on that freight train. And that's sort of what she looks like she's doing. She's already looking for that wash that Yulia is starting to create. Yeah, Yulia coming up through the middle there. There's Graham Morley on the red ski on the outside of uh, Yulia as well, who's also been doing a lot of work in the kayak, a really strong ski paddler. Um, so as these three come out to the first can, they've just gapped the field. Now we have a little bit uh, look a little bit further back. I, I can see Adam Parker there. Um, he's coming, the, being tagged off as one of the male competitors and starting to pick up some of those girls. Uh, so he's been tagged off quite nicely uh, from his female partner. But definitely Yulia Padru going into can number one, Graham Wally on her outside and Michaela Ketu hanging in there for dear life from Team Scott in third. And then running through that next route, we've got Alex Birmingham. Um, and then was that Ben Parker that uh, is coming around on that blue sonic ski? Might actually be Lane Crichton. Yeah, I think it, it is Lane, Lane Crichton, Crichton on the blue ski as yep. well. He's had a He's been tagged off uh, in, in a really good position and looking to come through and pick up a, a huge number of spots. Yeah, and I think that's the thing that... Have, has uh, that team got it right because Lane Crichton is going to come back if he can stay out of their wash and stay a little bit wide here and hope that he comes home with a with a wet sail little a couple of little bumps sitting underneath the girls now we see Graham Morley trying to push onto the top of that one she's not going to get down it uh, but neither is Yulia as well so a little bit of a flat spot now and there's a couple of opportunities for those back markers as you see Lane Crichton from Team Falloon uh, really starting to pick up the pace at the back end of the field yeah, and it's going to be hard, isn't it? Because as you said, long period swell. That means there's a big gap between the swells. Can Yulia and Greer get off a little bit ahead of lane and give themselves a race against two, or will it be three? I think it looks like it's going to be two. Yulia really pushing hard. Greer trying to stay with her. It looks like Yulia's got a little bit more momentum. If you get off with some momentum, you start running with momentum. But lane's just in the back there. He's just pulled down. Has he pulled down enough? It's going to be interesting. He's going to get off probably about five seconds after Yulia. Will he have enough to run down Yulia? I think he might. Well, look at that. It's Team Falloon as well. So Team Falloon in two and three. Yeah, Lane Crichton in two. Graham Morley coming up in three. So Yulia Padru just trying to hang on for dear life as Lane Crichton comes past. And these are the tactics from Team Falloon. They sent Christy Tate off first. She had a great paddle and gave... Uh, and Lane Crichton, the best opportunity to get up to the front of the field. So awesome tactics from Lane Crichton and Team Falloon. One and three uh, with uh, Team McEwen, finished off by Yulia Padru coming through in second. Adam Parker again, there you go. So there's the opportunity, the tactics from uh, Adam Parker's team just coming in uh, at the back end and taking over those girls at the, the back end of the race. Yeah, and, and that was interesting. And I guess it, it helps when you've got two amazing female paddlers in Christy and Greer. It allows you to sort of roll the dice a little bit. It allows you to sort of go, we're going to do, one, we're going to go the traditional guy first girl. The other one, because we've got the opportunity, we're going to swap it around. And I think, um, you know, to Team Falloon, what an amazing uh, uh, effort. So congratulations to Team Falloon, the winners of the first race, the Open the uh, ski, mixed ski relay, Lane Crichton, you set your female away first mate and then uh, managed to pull back the girls on the second half. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of pressure having to mow down those girls. I uh, couldn't let them beat me so I had to put in some good effort. Excellent. And Graham Morley, your, uh, your team captain uh, got off the beach brilliantly and then put you away but you had to work hard and uh, knowing that one of your other teammates is coming through, does that give you a bit of extra energy? Yeah, definitely. Both our teams were really strong in ski, so that was maybe a bit of motivation. Yeah, just keep pushing all the way to the end. All the best. Congratulations, Team Falloon. So an incredible first race, the open mixed ski relay. Plenty of effort, and what we've seen from this first race, Jay, is it's going to be a long, hard, grindy day. Absolutely. Not much on offer, uh, and any, anything that is an offer is going to be hard work to get in uh, that's what all of this showed. Um, both the, the first league and the second league was, was hard graft from the start to the finish. Yeah, 
and the tactics come into play as well. We didn't see a lot of it there, but the, that little uh, that little ditch just in the start line as well is making things a little bit dif uh, difficult for the guys as they hit the water. So tactics come into play, um, and the way you make up your team is going to be super important. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I do want to go back to there because definitely if you go back and see the start of that race again, there were a couple of guys that just slewed all over the shop, and that definitely allowed James in particular to get away and made it a bit hard for Kalani, who should try and uh, make sure that that gap was reduced. All right, well, the teams will be looking to look after their legs in particular for these days, these massive long transition runs. And uh, next up, we're going to have the uh, board relay or the mixed board relay. So really similar event. Um, again, two teams from each team or two groups from each team, two guys and two girls, or one male and one female in each uh, team. And we're going to see some of these guys that have just finished the ski race, some of the uh, Ironmen, off again. Yeah, double up is hard. Again, we talked about it. It's a long day. And when you have to go two races in a row with long, hard runs, um, this is going to be really, really challenging. And it looks like Caelan Brackenbush has had a really great start. Uh, Lockie Falloon um, right beside him. You can see that hole is hard work. Some of those boys really trying to, you know, hand on, uh, stand on hot coals out there. It's, it's really challenging to be aggressive in that, in that start place. And uh, out on the far side there, we must have James Scott, I think it is. He's going to, again, didn't have the st fastest start that we would expect from him, but now he's in the water, really making it making it his own. And it's Hunter Robinson uh, from Team Crawford that's hanging on to his wash. So we know Hunter's a fantastic uh, runner, really good on the beach as well, and he's just got a perfect start there. He's found the fastest guy on the water, and he's latched onto that left-hand wash, hanging in there for dear life. We saw Declan Dempster on the left-hand side of the field. He was the number one draft pick uh, as well coming into this event. So Declan Dempster was um, right up there for uh, Team Hart. Um, Probably slid back into the middle of the pack now, but we see these long races, the teams the, the teams are starting to come together. The last thing I'll say as well is these girls at the back of the field that have gone off first to hang on to the guys. So a couple of teams have put their female paddlers away first in order to try and have the, the same result that Lane Crichton had in that mixed ski relay. Yeah, and as you said, these guys, James Scott doing what he does best, going to the front, putting the pressure on and saying to everyone else, if you're good enough, you're going to have to go hard and you have to stay there. So we've still got uh, James Scott, uh, Hunter Robinson, um, Declan Dempster, Caelan Brackenbush, one of those those early front runners. They're still there, but James Scott's pushing hard. Uh, it's a long way back there. It's a little bit longer than a ski because you just don't have anything. You're not going to pull on anything as you go home. These slow uh, waves are going to make it really, really hard. Yeah, we're looking at the uh, the team colours as well. Uh, plenty of different colours in that top four, so we don't have anybody shining out at the moment. It's still early days, another another league to go after this. And James Scott really starting to push hard now, trying to get down the tiniest of little bumps. He just slides off the back of it, so another opportunity for a jag for the guys from the mid-pack, and you can see the wave lifting them up. Yeah, well, that's about eight or nine. No, one, two, three are off, but one, two, three, four. Four are going to come down. James gets off, thinks it's better, but no, he gets back on. And now it's a race in four. So as we come through, we have Hunter Robinson, uh, James Scott. Is that... Uh, it's like Nat Fit on Nat the far left-hand side, yeah. Yep, and uh, Fit. Danny Hart. And Danny Hart. Yep, as the boys, all these boys run well. Uh, all these boys are going, as they head to tag to their female... So it's Team Scott in one, it's Team Ophi in two, that's net fit. Um, we can see Hunter Robinson, I think, coming through for Team Crawford. He's tagged off first. And then we've got Pippa Nickel, Kiana Ophi. And Freya Stolt, yeah. it must be. Oh, no, that's not Freya Stolt. Sorry, team. All right, so as the girls get away, we've got Pippa Nickel coming round in one for Team Scott. We've got Kiana Ophi going through in two for Team Ophi, the team captain. And then it's Team Crawford sitting in third been chased down uh, the back by uh, Team Hart, and that's Ruby McSweeney. Ruby McSweeney had a great run into the water. She's picked up those top three just in that transition alone. Yeah, and, and I think you saw um, in Team Faluna, Anika Pahima as well. Great runner. Look at her. She's almost got into that, back, that group of four. Will she be fast enough? She's just got to hang in there, get over this one, pop this one well, and then she's right on the back of them. Ruby McSweeney had a cracking start. She's gone straight to the front of this field. 
We can see Pippa Nickel hanging on to her side wash there. Team Crawford on the right-hand side. Keanu Fee got left behind a little bit at the back end of that race. But we're looking at, um, like I said, Ruby McSweeney, Lucy Stroud, far yeah. right-hand side, yeah. sitting in fourth too. So two athletes for um, Team Hart. Yeah, and that is good. And, and I, I, I think that's a surprise to me. Ruby has been paddling well, but... But for her to go straight to the front, she must be really confident in her fitness because, as we've said a number of times, this is a long race. And, um, you know, someone like Pippa Nickel, um, we know, is really, really fit. So Ruby's gone to the front. Pippa's actually sliding off a little bit. She's not, I don't think, not on the best part of the wash. Uh, she's definitely making it a little bit more challenging for her um, when she wants to attack. But maybe she's thinking, oh, I'm just going to go and conserve. I'm going to get around these cans. Uh, and then once I get to the third can, I'm going to have a little bit more energy and I'm just going to take it on then. Just having a quick glance at the back end of the field as well. We had a couple of the female athletes go off first against the boys, and now we see those boys right at the back end of the field really racing up to try and pull back as much distance as they can against those female competitors. So a couple of the teams are rolling the dice and then hoping that they get close enough that they can pull down one of these waves and be in amongst it. But still, Lucy, uh, sorry, Ruby McSweeney, just they've got that one board length lead over Pippa Nickel and is going to make life difficult for the rest of the field. They're stretching it out a bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I think Ruby's uh, stretched it a little bit and it's going to be hard here for Pippa because she's not really on the wash. She's going to have to come over the wash, go on the outside and hope that she uh, has enough in the, in, in, the, in the engine to come back. But it definitely is Team Hart with two in the top four that are making uh, every post a winner here. Absolutely, that, that, those team points are crucial and as we know from representative events, Jace, you don't have to win every race but you've got to be up the front of most races and that's crucial for uh, these teams as they come back to the beach. It doesn't matter if you're coming 4th, 5th, 10th or, or 14th in this race, you need to pick up any um, point that is possible, pick up any place that is possible and we're going to see some people, doesn't matter if it's at the front of the field or the back of the field, just ending themselves oh. to try and uh, get that extra point. But a great little bump there Ruby for Ruby. Ruby Fantastic. Absolutely, you know, she's done all the hard work. I was a little bit worried there. It looked like Pippa might just be able to pull down it, but she wasn't. That's absolute great rewards for Ruby McSweeney, who's got off a, basically a wave in front, makes that run a little bit easier. But you can see back in the, in the uh, pack, there's a bit more running still to be done for a few of these athletes, as you said, to get that one place more to make sure their team goes well. But there it is, Ruby McSweeney. She's going to take the win for her team, and it looks like Team Hart is going to double up and win that one with first and third. Yeah, there you go, first and third with Team Scott in the middle. We have Team Falloon, and then two athletes from Team Crawford coming through as well, so good points for Team Crawford as well. But it's definitely going to be a win uh, to Team Hart. Cracking effort for the guys. They had uh, two guys go off um, first, Danny Hart and Declan Dempster, brilliant board paddlers from Mount Monganui, uh, and then backed up by some really strong female competitors. Hey, Danny, I just want to bring something. There was a real good close-up as we came around the corner of George Wedman's moustache. That is horrendous, man. I mean, there's some good paddling going on, but that moustache, that's got to go. I don't know if he's looking good. He looks... I don't want to say what he looks like because, well, we'll get in trouble. All righty, we've got uh, Ruby and Lucy. Come nice and close, girls, for, uh, from Team Hart, the winners of the uh, mixed board relay, and I understand this is your joker event as well. Ruby, you came from fourth, and by the time you got into your first four or five strokes, you're in the lead. That was always the plan? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but it's a, uh, it's a nice uh, a nice flat um, paddle out there, and for you, Lucy, um, coming back to the beach, you know, putting yourself in the mix, seeing your teammate out in front, um, you know, what was the motivation to get up and get those extra points? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, with this, every point counts, so trying to get up on the inside of the can, and get around and didn't catch a wave home, but hard paddle back to the beach and to see Rubes coming in one, it was pretty good. All right, well, set up by Danny Hart and Declan Dempster in the, at, at, for the first leg, but the girls brought it home. Maximum points with the Joker for Team Hart. Congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. So as we look at the uh, highlights of the board uh, relay, again, Callum Brackenbush got off fast. As they went across that first entry, it was pretty challenging times. Yeah, it was. And a little bit of our news after the back of this race. Our number one draft pick for the event, Declan Dempster, took a bit of an injury in that race as well, so his day is over. That's a massive uh, issue uh, for team uh, for his team. Uh, they're going to have to replace him. And, uh, yeah, really disappointing for the number one draft today. But, uh, again, an, an amazing uh, race from uh, Team Hart.
Lucy Stroud and Ruby McSweeney in particular just dominated the back end of that race and did a great job. Absolutely. And again, we've talked about it and we'll talk all day about it, but that ability to be consistent with where you go and where you finish, you don't have to win, be first, but you do have to be up the top as much as you can. All right, next big event. There we go. We've got a little points update. We've got Team Scott had a great, jumped out to a great little lead. Now, it's only one point actually over Team Hart, very close to the top end of the field. Still early days, but remember that each of these teams has a joker as well. So they've got to pick their um, their best event for the day and they get double points for that event. So it could be that uh, Team Scott has actually used their joker already, but they've jumped to the, an early lead after just a couple of races. And next up, we've got the mixed surf teams race. So this is two races within a race. There's a mixed race uh, for the men and a mixed race for the women. And four swimmers on the line and away they go. And I tell you what, some of these athletes are backing up for their third race in a row. And the interesting thing for me, I don't know if you saw it, but Louis Clark just went straight to the back. He didn't want a bar of miss, uh, messing around with anyone. He just went, I want my own water, so I'm happy to start in the back. And I'm just going to sit as we see him running in, probably almost last. And it'll be interesting to see where he comes out of his water because he just wants his own water and he just wants to say, I'm fast enough, I'm going to come past everyone. Yeah, he was very delicate going through that hole in the middle. You can see the swimmers, they've caught the worst of that hole compared to the craft ad. But look at Louis Clark's raiding in the middle of the field. Red top, he's waded right through to the top of the field, to the front end of the field now. So Louis Clark, the captain of Team Clark, obviously, and New Zealand's premier surf swimmer, I'm going to say at the moment. Uh, but he's waded himself right into the top five or six um, but still he's given them a 10 metre head start. He is and and I, I mean well, I think we all know that he can do that but that is a big head start um, and he's they're quite narrow on this field on this first boy too so he's going to have to he's going to have to get in the mix here uh, as we hit that first turning can. Yeah, looking at that, looks like Jack Kepper in the black top for Team McEwen. Jack Kepper's gone to the front of the field at least on the left hand side um, can't quite pick who's alongside him here, but here comes Louis Clark. Louis Clark swam onto their feet right now and coming into this next can. Louis Clark's gonna needs to oh, get out of that. He's boxed geez. out at the moment. Decided to go around them, and he's bringing his oh. water polo skills in. That is just bullying them. Louis Clark has just bullied those boys out of the way and uh, has taken the lead now, which is something that we um, expected. But gee whiz, that was rough. That was brutal. Yeah, I don't know what Louis thought he was doing. I think he thought he was going to try and cut them in half. He was, I think he was trying to go through them, uh, but he thought better of it in the end and went round the outside. But again, look at the horsepower of Louis Clark. He's just, he's just blowing them away. Jack Keeper's really trying to stay on him, but it's a hard job staying on Louis Clark's feet. Yeah, it is. And you see, there. remember, this is a team's race as well. So as much as we're impressed with Louis Clark uh, racing to the front, um, it does matter where the rest of his team is. So you can see Jack Kepper. He's um, leading that that chasing pack. Uh, and that chasing pack is four, five, six wide now. So uh, plenty of action still to come. And these waves are going to make a massive difference. Louis Clark's just going to get out the front and say, look, I just don't want to have a run finish. He doesn't want a sprint finish. Probably knows he can't win it. So he wants to be a wave in front. And as we look out there, you can see those lines. As you said, that, those long uh, uh, long swells that are coming through. Um, but Louis Clark is taking out the front. It looks like there's sort of two packs there, that front pack of about 15 and that back pack of about 10 or so. But here we go, away for Louis. Will he be able to pick this up by himself? Yes, he will. That's a relief. That is a relief. He'll be big sigh of relief. And there's a few guys coming down the second wave as well. But uh, it's going to be easy pickings for Louis Clark in one. Like we say, team's event though. So the next wave's going to have four or five on it. The wave after that's going to have six or eight on it. So going to be lots of sprinting for these uh, minor placings, which are going to make all the difference from a team's points perspective. It looks like we've got two black singlets getting up. That's Team McEwen, Jack Keeper. And is that Lucas Forbes? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, have a look. Maybe, maybe not. It looks a bit. Oh, no, that's um, Yanni Brown. Yeah, it is. That's Yanni, Yanni Brown. Brown. And then Tyron Evans. So, Yanni, the two midway boys fighting for that second and third. So, that was uh, Louis Clark, Yanni Brown, uh, Tyron Evans, and Jack Keeper. Uh, so, great points there for Team uh, McEwen. I've got two across the line as we look for the first female to come across the line. And I think that's the first one just about to go around the turning can now. That'll be Pippa Nickel. Pippa Nickel from Team Scott. 
Uh, great. She's uh, in, on the line with uh, Ella Sutton. Their male paddlers, George Wyman and Connor Beamish. So a great little uh, swim from Pippa Nickel there. She'll be hurting. She's had a couple of races in a row as well. Absolutely. And then Bella Wandsborough, the second female there, with uh, Zoe Crawford. I think that's her, the team captain for Team Crawford, just coming across the line. So that was Pippa Nickel, Bella Wandsborough, and uh, Zoe Crawford, the first three females. So as we, as we look at it, uh, it looks like uh, Team Scott might have taken the win there. Uh, Team Clark, as you would expect, were playing the Joker. Um, they look like they've got third and doubled up their six points to make 12. But it's uh, Team Scott will take the win. Team Falloon will go second. And uh, Team Clark, playing the Joker, will come in third. Yeah, that's for the men as well. And then in the the surf teams for the women's uh, is Team Scott again in first. Uh, Team McEwen, they played the Joker on their females. Uh, they're going to come in second and get uh, almost maximum points out of that. And then Team Crawford uh, sitting in third. Excellent stuff. All right, it's always nice to get uh, the first person across the line, uh, but it is a team's event and team points matter. So we're first in the black team that we believed, uh, Team McEwen. It's Lee the McEwen's team. We Unofficially, we think you got the, the nod in terms of points. Um, a massive effort from the team all around. Yeah, it's so great to see them swim so well and put in like lots of effort. It's just amazing. And Jack, mate, we saw you into the water early, eh? and then big old Louis Clark come to the front, but that's a big pair of feet to be chasing. Yeah, for sure. I just try to hang on as long as I can. It's ended up being long, but got a little wave at the end and seen Yanni pop up next to me, so just a good run up the beach. Fantastic. Those uh, run legs are really starting to hurt. How are the pins feeling, Yanni? Oh, real tired legs. Long <laughs> run. Make the most of it though. And we're ripping through these events. There's not much going on in terms of rest, eh? So how many more events have you got going on? What's to come? I think I've got the tube rescue and then the dear love at the end, so we've got some exciting ones left. Great effort from Team McEwen. Top points. Well done, guys. Thank you. So as we start looking at the uh, the highlights, have a look if you can where Louis Clark is as he goes around this tuning flag and see, as Danny said, where he ran through to. After that first wave, he went from about 20th into about 8th. And then as we go to this first can, just look at the bullying behaviour that Louis Clark shows. Yeah, just brutal way. But that's his game. That's his game. He never likes to lead out front. He always likes to smash the back end of a race. And, um, geez, he does a good job of it too. But when you've got the size and skills of a man uh, like that, and he is a, he's been big in the water polo scene for a number of years, so he's not afraid to, afraid to get his hands dirty and push and shove some guys around the cans. Absolutely. And, again, I think just, again, he's shown that he is probably our best surf race swimmer uh, in New Zealand. Um, and it is great to have him, uh, all our best athletes on, stage here at the Invitational. And as you say, like some of these um, athletes now, a couple of races in and they're already done some long transitions, they're going to be hurting. Next up, we've got the men's ski teams race, so two athletes from uh, each team in a teams race once again and now we're looking for, I think for me, Team Crawford, Kalani Gilbertson and Jaden Murphy, really strong team. Uh, also looking at Team Ophi, Ruben Crichton and Cade Scheib, two boys that have um, been really strong on the skis this year. But for me, it's a, a, a change now or a, um, a competition between the Ironman based athletes and the straight up ski paddlers. Straight up ski paddlers, probably stronger on the flat, the Ironman guys have got the advantage by getting into the water first. And also, the Ironman guys probably can manage this back-to-back -back running. So the, the ski peddlers are starting to struggle. This is at least race two for these guys, um, and that's, that's hurting now. It really is hurting. So, you know, we, we've, we've taken off, and as we see it, it's Lockie Falloon and Adam Parker. They've gone to the front with Jada Murphy not far behind. Um, having a look at the back end there, it was Kalani Gilbertson, but we saw what he did in that ski relay. So we know he's going to come back with... Uh, with a thunder. Yeah, and Jada Murphy in the middle of the field. Adam Park has gone a little bit further left to try and get around that hole. He's going to try and wipe. He, he almost waited through it to get to the shallow part of the bank, and now he's had to get back off again. So a little bit of a mistake from Adam Parker on the left-hand side, but it was Lockie Falloon and, surprise, surprise, uh, James Scott going to the front of the field. But look at Kalani Gilbertson come through the middle. He's not going to get stuck behind on the wash this time. No, he's not. And the one thing, I don't know if you saw it, but Lane Crichton had an amazing start, just really jumped on and sort of jumped on a ski about... 
sixth or eighth, but actually by the time he got the skim finished, he was in third. So he's right there on the inside as well. He's just followed that uh, inside run of Kalani Gilbertson, and he's in a really good spot. Um, and so there's those five there on that front one. Kalani Gilbertson leading James Scott and uh, Lane Crichton on the either side. Then it's Cade Scheib, Reuben Crichton, and Lockie Falloon. The What's that? Five. Or yeah. six. <laughs> Top six through. And I think James Scott, you know, after doing the, the ski race, the ski relay and the board relay, he'll be stoked just to have a wash to play with it at the moment. Oh, 100%. The guy, he'll be starting to hurt a little bit. And I think James Scott knows as well that all he has to do is get to the beach beside Kalani Correct. and he's probably got the legs on him up the beach. Absolutely. And that would be the smart thing because he's had to do race so often and he's still got races to do. So he's thinking, he's not only thinking about this race, he's also thinking about the races to come. So, but as we look at this field, it that... There's a race in two now, same as it was for the ski relay. Kalani Gilbertson, James Scott look like they're on a little runner, and it looks like there's two, four, five at the back there. Is that uh, Fletcher Moles maybe has come through now on those other boys? So that's Fletcher Moles, Lockie Falloon, Lane Crichton, Reuben Crichton, and Cade Scheib, that back one. But Kalani Gilbertson's just pulled away. James Scott just fallen off it. Kalani Gilbertson might have done enough here to, to come through by himself and win the ski relay but he is, again, reminder, he is looking for his partner as well. Absolutely. And we look to see the, the cap colours, or sorry, the vest colours as well. Two blue caps on that second wave. Uh, we have Cade Scheib and Ruben Crichton, and two from uh, Lockie Falloon's team, Lockie Falloon and Lane Crichton. So these points up the beach are going to make all the difference. We see the two boys from Team Ophi, Ruben Crichton and Cade Scheib. They've got off the beach well. Lane Crichton falling off the back a little bit. That could cost them the overall points in this race. But we see those two competitors from Team Ophi, Cade Scheib, Ruben Crichton, it's Kalani oh, Gilbertson. Oh, look at that. Oh, but James Scott and Cade Scheib, is it? They, were, they came together, two big boys, having a bit of a push and shove. Those two boys will be having a bit of a laugh about it now. Um, nothing intentional there, just two big boys coming together, wanting to be better than the other person. Oh, did you see the pain on Clowney Gilbertson's face? He hated that run. He needed the wave to get down it, because I tell you what, if he wasn't on that front wave, I think that run would have uh, hurt him even more coming up the beach. But the boys are buckled. We're only four races into this event, and these guys are screaming. I, I tell you what, if I'm Lockie Falloon or James Scott right now, I'm going... Hey, can I have a race off? <laughs> yeah. Can I can I just have a sit down? Because I have run and paddled a lot, and this is really hurting. But like we say, it's a team's event. So uh, first across the line, Kalani Gilbertson looking for uh, his partner, Jaden Murphy. He looked like he'd be mid-pack. So that's probably not going to be a win for uh, Team Crawford in the skis, but um, just a dominant ski paddling display from Kalani. I would have expected that Kalani Jaden team to be really, really strong and maybe just didn't get the run that we would have expected from him because I would have expected him to be up the front. All right, Kalani Gilbertson, Team Crawford, first across the line, mate. We're talking about the speed that you've got from the kayaking that you've been doing, but these run legs are a whole different game, aren't they? Oh, yeah, you know, we don't do any running over the winter, but just being able to have that flat water conditions was a real benefit for that race. So you had to push through the field because you weren't first off the beach, but you got to the can first, can first. That was always the goal? Yeah, oh, yes, strategies, mate, always. <laughs> just relying on that pure flat water speed. Um, to get ahead and lucky enough to get that runner at the end there so I didn't have to rely on the run at the end too much. Good on you brother, a fantastic effort. Congratulations, all the best for the rest of the day. Cheers mate, thank you. So as we have a look at back at the uh, highlights of this event, uh, again, as expected, we see the Ironman guys with that running capability go to the front of the field, but I think the waves are flat enough now where those strong ski paddlers, especially the boys from Red Beach, really came to the front, and we saw you know, at least four guys from Red Beach there between Kalani Gilbertson, Cade Scheib, Lane Crichton and Reuben Crichton, all on those front waves and uh, doing a great job for their teams. Yeah, and as we said, you know, it is starting to get hard now. So this is the time where the fitness, particularly that running fitness, is starting to pay off. And, and, and you said it at the start, you know, the Ironmen, this is really up the Ironmen's uh, uh, alley now and making it really tough for these big ski pedaling only guys. All right, lining up next for the women's ski teams again. Two athletes uh, per team in a uh, points format. 
Again, some incredible teams in there. I'm looking at Team Falloon. Christy Tate and Graham Morley surely going to be at the front of the field. But as we see, the race has started. Michaela Pocock, we know she's fast on the beach. She's in a team with Sherelle Shand. So Michaela Pocock, one of our premier junior uh, beach sprint athletes, and she's going to be first into the water. Um, closely followed by Christy Tate. A great run from Christy Tate. Yeah, and I think here they go. There's that little hole. It makes it really, really tough. And Michaela's on and she's paddling. She's got through that hole. But Christy Tate's right on her inside. And you'd be expecting Christy to come past pretty quickly as they hit that first wave. And then you've got Yulia Pedrut uh, just off the back. Maggie Robinson, Greer Morley, um, some of the big wheels in the place just off the back there trying to come through as they hit that first wave. But it's Christy Tate. She's got a bit of a lead now. And this, I think Christy will be very happy with this lead. She'll be happy to have Michaela on her side uh, and know that she's gapped Yulia, uh, Greer, Maggie, uh, some of those bigger ski paddlers. Yeah, I would have uh, I would have liked to see Michaela come across a bit quicker, try and hook onto that side wash, but she's given uh, Christy a bit of space now, and that means that the wash isn't going to be there. So Michaela starting to pull, uh, fall back into the pack, and we see Yulia Padru uh, from Team... Um, uh, McEwen uh, coming up into third and you'd expect her to come into the uh, um, inside wash of Michaela Pocock very shortly. Yeah, and, and you see that back group where you've got Alex Birmingham, Greer Morley, uh, Maggie Ke Robinson. Keanu Fee's in there Keanu as well. Keanu Fee in there as well. They're, it's gonna they're going to all come together on this first can and she's going to be a bit of a mess. So it'll be interesting to see how we all get around here. But they're all playing nice at the moment. They've all come around that first can, all giving each other a bit of room. But it's still uh, Christy Tate. She's got a, a ski and a half league, length lead on Yulia Pedrut in second. Michaela Pocock in third. Um and then on the inside, that, is that Keanu Fee or Pippa Nickel maybe? I think it was Keanu Fee Keanu jumped Fee. up on the inside yeah, as well. Graham Morley just got caught up there. She got, was in that sort of pack, and now she's been spat out the back of that group. So Graham Morley is Christy Tate's team uh, partner, and she just managed to find a bit of space and dig through there. It was only took three or four double strokes, but Graham Morley just pushed around and as they come into that third can and giving herself an opportunity to take the team win in this event. Yeah, and see, that's what we talked about. They were just coming to get on that first can. They actually came around the first can and the second can, all right, but then they all came to get on the third can. And Michaela Pocock, Alex Birmingham just got all caught up. Maggie Robinson was there, and there just wasn't much room. But Graham Morley made a really good decision, popped on the inside, gave herself a bit of water, and now it's just a hard paddle home. But it's Christy Tate. Can she pull down this little runner? She's trying hard, but I don't think she will. So Yulia's going to come up, I think, on this little one behind. Yulia will be trying hard to see if she can pull down with Christy. We know Christy can run well. So it will be an interesting to see what happens. That's Keanu Fee still in third in that fourth pack that's got Greer Morley, Alex Birmingham, Maggie Robinson, Michaela Pocock. They're all working hard to try and stay there. Yeah, we saw Christy Tate. She had a great, a couple of great paddles over in Texas with the Blackfins um, not so long ago. So uh, bringing that form from the international competition uh, through to our domestic season and uh, having a great paddle. Again, we saw Graham Morley just got through the back end of that race really clean as well. She stood up in fourth and chasing down Yulia Padru. So points for oh, Team Falloon. great points. Yeah, real great team points there. Keanu Fee's going to end up second, so the Blackfins team members... First and second. All First, oh, geez, it's going to be close coming to the line. The girls need to push for every position. Yulia's held on well for that second, for third spot. She will just, but I don't think it's going to matter. I think that's going to be uh, Christy Tate and, uh, and Greer Morley are going to take the win there, uh, which is a great effort for them. Some wicked running at the end there. Lucy Shroud running hard. What we, what we love about this event as well is there's a couple of uh, girls in there that are not um, you know, specialist ski paddlers, the likes of Michaela Pocock, but putting themselves in the mix and giving their teams points. And like we said at the start, every place counts for these girls and they need to push no matter whether it's for first or second or for uh, 12th and 13th. Uh, it makes a massive difference. And look where we are. What an incredible uh, place to be racing. We're pretty lucky, aren't we? Look at that. You can see that long time swell through there. Um, you know, Lots of beautiful lines, and look at that beach. Good amount of people here today watching and supporting these great athletes. Uh, it is awesome to live where we live, and it's great to do a sport that we do. Well, we've got Christy Tate down here, Team Falloon, the winner of the ski race yesterday, uh, Christy, and then backing it up today. Look, it's been about a minute and a half since the race finished, but you're still blowing hard. This is tough work. It's the run. Yeah, yeah the pedalling's the easy part. The running up and down is it's a long way, especially carrying a ski on the way in. But 
Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> You've done a lot of work uh, over the winter in the kayaks, a little bit on ski as well, and after debuting for the Black Fins, but to have your, your kayaking buddy here, Graham Morley, as well, that's awesome 10 points, and we're going to call it early unofficially that the uh, the win in the women's uh, ski teams uh, is Team Floon. So, Greer, how would you find that chasing out your mate here? Yeah, it was called Christie's Epic on Ski, so just trying to hang on to her. I knew she, I had so much faith in her, so, yeah, it's cool. And awesome to race in the team event. So we've got a bit of a chance to flush out now, girls. I think everybody's hurting. Beach flags are next. It's going to take a bit of time. So an opportunity to get that lactic acid out and then finish off strong the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, can't wait. Brilliant. Congratulations, guys. A little bit different from this where we did see some of our strong ski paddlers actually get into the front of the field early and so it is good to see that we have uh, ski paddlers that are strong in the run as well. This is the moment where Christy Tate really took uh, control of the event. Uh, dominated that first 20 strokes off the beach and got herself away nice and clean. And, that, and that's what gave her that run up at the end by herself was that initial speed that she had across the line just allowed that, that, that second pack, just got a little bit hung up on that first couple of waves that came through but it was uh, Christy Tate from start to finish, great result. And we have our points update after eight events and we're tied at the top, Team Scott and Team Falloon both sitting on 47 points with Team Clark on 42. We know a couple of these teams have already played their joker so they're jumping up to the front of the points score uh, early on in the day. Uh, looking at Team Hart and Team Irving, you know that Team Irving's going to have a power play coming up later in the beach events uh, so they'll be moving up through the field a little bit later on. And that is what we'll see. We'll see these points change around and, and go up and down a little bit because that joker is, as we said, worth double points. So sometimes you'll think, man, why is my team down there? It's because they haven't played the uh, joker. And why is my team so far in front? It might be because they've already played it. So again, we just have to look, just be a little bit careful that what we're thinking here is happening out here. Moving on to the male beach flags and uh, we are down to the top five of the male beach flags. Who have we got left over? We have uh, Oscar Smith uh, racing for Team Falloon. We have Seven Mapu racing for Team Scott. We have Zach Johnson racing for Team Hart. We have Morgan Foster racing for Team McEwen in the black. Uh, and we have uh, Hunter Robinson racing for Team Crawford in yellow. Top five, only four will remain after this run. Again, I just marvel at uh, what Morgs is doing. Um, you know. 48 years old and, and, and he is at the top of his game still but some young guys really trying to bite at his heels um, and we'll see how they go here. Nice clean start across the field. You see how quick Morgan Foster gets up. Nice and comfortable coming through there. And it is Hunter Robinson that got across in front of Zach Johnson from Team Hart. So Zach Johnson from Team Hart that's going to miss out. And like you say, Jace, this is Morgan Foster's domain. He lives for this. Absolutely does. And again, hard for Zach. You know, obviously he had uh, Seven and Oscar right around him. He had to try and come across to, uh, to Hunter. But Hunter was too good, held him out in the... Uh, and he stays in, and unfortunately for Zach Johnson, he uh, has to wait till next year. It's one of the things I love about this sort of event and these sort of representative events um, is it got someone like Hunter Robinson, who, as we saw in the board relay, was up in second place going out to the cans beside James Scott. So those multidiscipline athletes become so valuable in a team's competition like this where they can contribute points across the board. And, uh, you know, it's, there's some people like Hunter Robinson that are just phenomenal athletes in multi or a lot of different areas of the, uh, um, of the sport. And again, good runner, right? So, you know, like... The, the benefit at an Invitational is picking someone that can run really well and it's probably exacerbated today because these runs are so long on this hard sand but whenever you're picking an Invitational I would imagine one of the things that you're looking at as a coach is who can run and Hunter Robinson can do that, um, this is at least his second or third race of the day uh, and he's still able to manage a real power based sport, uh, event like the Beach Flags. Right, so we've got seven Mapu in one, Hunter Robinson uh, in two, Morgan Foster in three, and Oscar Smith on the outside beside Morgan Foster. You'd have to think that the boys are looking at Hunter Robinson as the target right now. Yeah, but again, Morgan Foster's thinking, how can I use some of this? So again, he's thinking not just this round, he's thinking what two, three or four rounds in front. Who is my person that I want to get out here? How can I do it? Is this the time? that I can get him out. So he's probably looking at Hunter and thinking, okay, he's my outlet, maybe. But he's also thinking Oscar Smith, maybe this is the time to get Oscar Smith out. 
That's why he's a world champion. He's got those skills. Again, super quick off the line. Hunter Robinson getting a little bit blocked out. He had a look around the outside, hoping the boys were going to take each other out. Uh, but just too much class from the top three. And these guys, these three guys are the, the top three beach athletes in New Zealand at the moment. Yeah, and I think, I mean, uh, Morgan uh, and Oscar and uh, Seven all had good starts. And I think what the end it was like, we're all going all good here, guys. We'll just don't put too much effort in. Don't try and hammer each other. We'll just take our flags. And unfortunately for Hunter Robinson, that meant that he was out. These guys are a long way down now. We started with uh, 16 athletes. Uh, we're down. We were going two at a time uh, early on. We got down to the top eight, and then we started dropping one at a time. So we're like maybe the 10 or 11 runs in now, and this is where it becomes a bit of an endurance competition. You know, Morgan Foster, we know, is Morgan Foster fresh is lightning. There's nobody in the country that can get up quicker than Morgan Foster when he's fresh. But now the fatigue starts to set in a little bit, and you can see the boys are looking a little bit jaded. Seven Mapu's looking like he's done 10 runs. Oscar Smith is looking like he's done 10 runs. Morgan Foster will never show it. No, and but the thing is, I agree with you, but Morgan is so good at managing himself through this as well. So, yeah, he would probably rather it was just one off, but also he's also really, really good at managing himself through this uh, sort of situation and making sure that he's as efficient as he possibly can and he's ready for that run. And I guess in his head he's just thinking the most important thing is the next turn. And that's what he's saying to himself every single time. How can I get myself into the best possible situation to have the best turn I can the next time? Yeah, and he's on the outside for this run now. So again, Seven Mapu's managed to pull lane one. We've got Oscar Smith in the middle and Morgan Foster on the uh, outside. We know that Morgan Foster turns to his left. Um, so he'll be turning away from the two boys. So not necessarily an opportunity to get his shoulder in straight off the turn. But these are the little tactical things that the Beachies really do work on. They're going to know exactly how their guys beside them turn, which way they go, where their strengths are, and what part of the race they can attack them. Yeah, and I guess for, for Seven and for Morgan, unless they have an absolutely lightning start, they've really only got one option. But for Oscar, he's got two options. If he has a really good start, he might think, well, I can take out my biggest competition here. So we'll have a bit of a look, see what the turn's like, and then what options will they have available to them. So they get up, they turn quickly, all of them have got quite well, but Seven and Morgan have squeezed Oscar out. So we talked about it at the start. If Oscar got up well, he would be able to have a choice. But unfortunately for Oscar, they all got up about the same. It was all a race, and in the end, Morgan and Seven just squeezed Oscar out. Morgan just has that ability. As soon as the or as soon as the whistle goes, when he turns, he seems to be half a step in front anyway. He's always just that little bit quicker. Maybe it's because he's short. Uh, maybe it's because the boys beside him are a bit taller. But I think it's just because he just seems to be able to turn underneath himself and get himself just that little shoulder in front. Oscar had nowhere to go. Yeah, and, and he knows. He's smart, right? He knows that Oscar's faster than him. He knows that. So what does he do? He turns, reduces that space to make sure that Oscar, if Oscar's going to come around him, he's got to run round him, not through him. And, uh, and uh, that's what happened. He made it really tough. Seven got up well. Um, and in the end, there was just nowhere for Oscar to go. I love the way Morgan uh, like, takes on this event and the way he just sort of um, walks around the, the arena. He definitely makes it his own. There's nobody in this arena that doesn't understand that this is his house. Yeah. And uh, if you're going to beat Morgan Foster in any of these events, then you're going to have to take it off him because he's not going to give it to you. Yeah. And again, but Seven should be sitting there. I mean, he's done. he's had three really good turns in the last three. He's definitely got an opportunity here. Uh, he's in the, it looks like they've drawn exactly the same spot. So it looks like uh, Seven's going to be in one and Morgan's going to be in two. So they know how each other turn in this place. Um, now it's just up to Seven. Get this turn right. Get this turn right and I'm in the game. Don't worry about how fast you're running. Don't worry about where the flag is. Just number one, Seven's saying to himself, get the turn right. Some great excitement for the crowd as well. They love this event. And a really good opportunity for some of the athletes that have been going around three or four events already to have a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a rest and flush out some of that lactic acid. So they, they love a flags uh, pit uh, in order just to give them that little bit of break as well. So the girls starting to warm up and get ready for their race, but we're down to the final two. Morgan Foster on the left-hand side as you're facing the water. Seven Mapu on the right-hand side for Team Scott. 
uh, this is for all the all the chocolates. Yeah, and, and again, we look at it. These are the two of the teams that have been out the front, right? So Team Scott, you know, just backing up their uh, lead at the moment, um, and Team McEwen, you know, just keeping the pressure on them. So as we get ready, both boys just thinking turn. And they're away. Oh, there it is again, though. He's done it again. He just got around, pushed across, made sure there was no... <laughs> G'day, Morgan. Uh, making sure that uh, Seven, if he was going to beat him, he was going to have to go around him. Uh, and in the end, Seven couldn't go around him. Uh, and Morgan Foster backs up again. And he is our Invitational Beach Flags champion. Unbelievable athlete, isn't he? You know, he's been around for so many years and uh, still got it. There's, uh, like I said, there's nobody better in the in the world that can pull off those events. We'll just grab Morgan there, mate. Uh, we, we've been giving you a bit of grief on the sideline, but it's all respectful, of course. Uh, again, on the top of the podium. Yeah, mate. I, um, I'm not saying it's getting any easier, but um, it's good to have some really good competitors coming through. And to be honest, every round I can feel. Oscar and Seven getting closer and closer as their conditioning comes in in youth and um, I managed to hold on get the get the win so very pleased with that. Hopefully that's a team black. We're gonna step it up from there get a few more wins. Oh mate we appreciate it we appreciate your leadership on the beach as well we know this is your domain and you're not done by a long shot my man so congratulations we'll see you the rest of the season. Thanks Danny cheers man. So as we look at this uh, last run up just have a look Morgan closes the gap here he goes, he just pushes across. Little stumble from Seven, and unfortunately for Seven, that was the end. Always the showman too. We love you, Morgan. So a good first half, what do you reckon, Danny? Um, some really good uh, competition, some really great racing, and some hard racing. Yeah, absolutely. And what we're seeing from a points perspective as well, again, it's not so much about winning every race. It's been right at the point in pointy end of every race and that's what's important for these uh, representative based competitions. We need to have athletes that are really um, keen to push themselves to the limit at that front end of the field and uh, make sure that you know they're offering every tiny little point for their uh, for their team. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned something really good, you talk about representative, I guess you know the representative racing in New Zealand is, is few and far between so there's not lots of it um, and you know some of these athletes that have raced for the black fins and stuff like that they probably have a little bit of an advantage they've seen what this is like you talked about it just uh, at the end there uh, uh, during the men's beach flags that ability to to just recover that ability to to sit down get some food on get some energy right because we've got the second half still coming up and and yeah it's great to start really really well but ultimately you have to race really well across the day that's right and it's a completely different dynamic from a traditional multi-day competition like a New Zealand titles or an Aussie titles. Every race that these athletes do is a straight final. There's no heat, there's no semi-final, there's no opportunity to go, like I didn't have a great start in my semi-final and just paddle through for sixth place. Every race, no matter when you line up, is for points and every point counts, every place counts. So um, straight finals all the way around and that is a tough, tough thing to do if you're not used to it. Absolutely. All right, moving along now to the uh, female beach flags. Again, we're down to the top five. On the right-hand side, we have uh, Team uh, McEwen, which is Bella Rose Mountfort. Uh, in two, we have Team Irving, Sophie Irving, the team captain. In three, we have uh, Team O'Fee, Jordan Grills. In four, we have Team Crawford, Alicia Wilson. And on the far left-hand side, we have Team Hart with Riley Grills, the sisters in the final five. Oh, Bella Rose. That's uh, harsh. She's got, been going well this season, but she's just, unfortunately for her team, Team McEwen, she's just broken. So she will be knocked out at fifth. And uh, we're back to uh, Brianna Irving, the two Grill sisters, and Alicia Wilson. Yeah, disappointing for Bella Rose there. She'll be wanting to get into that top three and push through. But look, fifth place is still good points for Team McEwen. So all is not lost. It's not a complete disqualification. But she'll learn from that. She's young. She's got a massive future ahead of her. Thinking about those teams, uh, Team Scott's not here. So yeah, maybe Bella Rose is a bit upset. But the reality is that she is still bettering her team versus the teams that they are racing against. 
All righty, lining up again. Now we have on the right-hand side Jordan Grills from Team Ophi in one. We have Brianna Irving from Team Irving in two. We have Alicia Wilson from Team Crawford in three. And we have Riley Grills from Team Hart on the uh, left-hand side as we're facing out to see in lane number four. And again here, the pressure is on getting that turn. You know, don't think about how fast you're going, don't think about the flag, just think about getting this turn right. We know that uh, Brianna Irving is the incumbent, she's the uh, current uh, Blackfins representative, uh, massively strong in the uh, beach sprint, but also a really competitive uh, flagger as well, but she's the one with the target on her back. Jordan Grills uh, raced over at the Battle of the Tasman, she did an amazing job over there racing against Britt Inger and EJ Forsyth. I'm really interested to see how she will go uh, up against Brianna Irving. And here they go. They're away, Lark, and it's pretty close. And oh, Brianna Irving. See, that's that time. She got up well, and she thought, maybe is this the time to get hold of uh, Jordan Grills? And she came across, but Jordan was smart enough just to pop in behind and pick up the, the uh, flag next to her. And uh, so we have uh, Brianna Irving, the Grills sisters, um, coming through. Yeah, great effort from Alicia Wilson as well for Team Crawford. Good points for Team Crawford as well. A solid fourth place. Um, she'll be pretty happy with that, I imagine, and the, given the competitiveness of this field. Uh, but if you're Brian Irving now, you're lining up knowing that you've got two sisters that probably want to be in the final together. But now as we go into this top three, Brianna knows that she's got the target on her back. She's got two sisters that would love to be in the final uh, against each other. Uh, so she knows she's going to have to be on the top of her game to be able to get through to this final runoff. And where are they going to line up? It looks like Brianna will be flanked by both the sisters either side. And she'll be pretty confident because she had a really good turn, uh, the last one. And that definitely makes a difference. Uh, and now she'll be thinking, what is my outlet? So what is my outlet flag? If I don't get up well, where am I going to go? If I do get up well, where am I going to go? Because she knows that both the Grills sisters are going to be doing everything they possibly can to make it difficult for her. Yeah, Coach Trent Oliver will be on the beach looking at this really closely. He's done an amazing job with those beach athletes down in the Taranaki region. And the uh, the Grill Sisters are just part of a big group of guys uh, and girls that are really starting to push through uh, to the front of the field and the uh, beach flags and the beach sprint arenas. Here we go. The top three. Turn. Brianna Irving gets up. Wow, well, she gets up a step ahead of the two Grill sisters. Oh, I don't know what Jordan was thinking. Where am I going to go here? I don't really want to get my sister out, but I don't really have an option. Yeah, that was tricky from Brianna. She probably had a crack there at uh, at, um, at bluffing uh, Jordan Grills. I think she probably knows that Jordan's been the strongest flagger out of the two sisters uh, up till today. So she had a bit of a shot at doing a bit of a sidestep and getting rid of Jordan, mixing things up. But uh, I think Riley kind of given it up by that point. And so uh, an opportunity for Jordan to make sure she secured her place into the final. Um, but that was dominant from Brianna. Um, Jordan is going to have to have a massive run in this final run to get over the top of the current uh, New Zealand representative. Yeah, she will, but again, it is only about one turn. So yes, Brianna's had the best last couple of turns, but this is the final. It's not like a competition, let's add them all together. It's just about one turn. And we know that Jordan does have a good turn in her. So if she can do this one, that's all that matters. Yeah, and we are starting to get to the back end of a lot of races too. So like we said in the, the men's event, Morgan was starting to blow a little bit. He was strong enough, but there is an endurance factor that comes in now. And we know that most sprinters don't like endurance. No, although you would say that, you know, Brianna, I think Brianna Irving's first ever medal at a Nationals was in the 2K beach run. So she is a little bit different than most sprinters. She does have a back end. Uh, but I think Jordan does too. She, she has a lot of flagging. Um, I don't think that... Um, I don't think it'll be a big issue for her. I think both girls are ready to go and know that this is the one turn that really, really matters. Always very, very tense at the start of a uh, Beach Flags competition, especially these last runs. The nerves are right up there. You need a bit of a shake of the head from Jordan. She knows that she's on. And this is going to have to be a blinder. <laughs> Brianna's got up well, but so has Jordan. But Brianna's just got that step ahead. And uh, in the end, she made it relatively comfortable. Um, she got up, she got up a little bit quicker than Jordan, came across, uh, closed down the space and meant that Jordan was going to have to do something, either jump underneath her or round her to get past her. And in the end, Brianna Irving was just too fast. 
Yeah, it's not far off though, Jordan Grills, is she? You can, uh, that she can take confidence out of that run, uh, knowing that when it comes to the pointy end of the 2023-24 season, she's got a red hat, a red hot crack at taking out Brian Irving in that Flags event. Mate, there's always a bit of pressure on you when you're in the incumbent. You've been wearing a black cap a lot, but it's good to have some early season form. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool. Um, it was good to see that I still have it after a hard um, winter of training and just getting back from Texas. So it was good, good gauge of how I am going. And the, the quality of the women's field is getting really, really good at the moment. Those girls sisters and uh, the likes of uh, Michaela Pocock and, uh, and the others really starting to come out and put some pressure on you as well. Yeah, definitely. It's really cool to see. I've um, been training with Michaela Pocock up at Mairangi Bay, which has been really awesome for my flags as well as hers. So it's been really cool. Excellent. All the best for the rest of the season and uh, for the rest of the day with your team as well. Thank you. So as we finish up with the females beach flags, again, really dominant position uh, from Brianna Irving. She, the, the last three turns were absolutely lightning. And in the end, um, she was uh, the ultimate winner. Yeah, it's not far off though, Jordan Grills, is she? You can, uh, she can take confidence out of that run, uh, knowing that when it comes to the pointy end of the 2023-24 season, she's got a red, hat, a red hot crack at taking out Brianna Irving in that flags event. Yeah, and uh, uh, with Jordan, you know that her dive is really good too, so she just has to be somewhere there or thereabouts, um, and she'll put some pressure on Brianna. And uh, if it comes to a dive, um, Jordan knows uh, through history that she, she'll go well in that part of the race. Right, so we're into the uh, men's board teams now. Again, similar to the ski race from earlier on, we have uh, two competitors from each team. It is a team's points event, so 16 boys on the line. And again, we're going to look to see these uh, these strong runners get to the front of the field early. Yeah, absolutely. And so we see George Wemmon putting in the big steps there. He's He's gone out pretty quick. Um, Hunter Robinson. Hunter, Hunter Robinson, Robinson again. It has been. Just out of the beach flags. Um, so really good for both Hunter Robinson and for uh, George, George Women. But who's that way out to the far side? That's Jack Kepper. Jack Kepper's trying to go around this hole. The boys are having to bound through and paddle through that hole. Jack Kepper's had a shot going way out to the left-hand side as they go out to sea to get that, uh, that shallower run into the water and hopefully a little bit of an advantage. Well, he went a long way down. He probably had to run an extra 20 metres at least. So hopefully it's stayed shallow for a bit and it's given him a little bit of momentum through this. We can't see him quite at the moment, but he'll be right out to that right-hand side. He'll come into the shot sometime soon. It'll be interesting to see. Here he comes now. So it definitely was faster for him, but was it faster for him versus everyone else? And it looks like we've got... Uh, Coming to the front there, is that... Um, Danny Hart. Danny Hart. Yeah, Danny Hart, team captain from Team Hart. He's gone to the front of the field as George Winman has jumped onto his left-hand side with John Wid George Winman's teammate, James Scott, fighting in the uh, that second group and probably coming into the front end of the field. You see, Jack Kepper, he's managed to get himself out of any trouble. So Jack Kepper probably didn't have the start that he wanted out of that risk, but he's given himself a lot of clean water and he's managed to get to that second group nice and quickly. And, and sometimes that's what you want. You just want your own water just so you can manage your own pace because sometimes at the start that first half of the rate you because you're on someone else's wash you have to go at their speed and sometimes that's not good for you so you know smart stuff from Jack Keeper but it's still George Wemmon he's gone to the front now uh, Danny Hart on the back, back part James Scott through the middle there uh, and is that Jaden Murphy? Yeah, Jaden uh, Murphy through. came through. Jaden Murphy, like uh, Joe Wilson uh, from Team Falloon, had probably third round the apex, but then Jaden Murphy just came and, like we saw with uh, Louis Clark, just bullied his way into the front of that field. But this is where James Scott starts to go strong as well. Jack Kepper still trying to find his own water. He just doesn't want to be part of the pack at the moment. Out of there on the left hand side by himself, alongside Taylor Chamberlain. And there's some swells coming, so there's three or four swells, and I don't know if they'll get down this first one. They're pushing hard. No, they will. So that's Jaden, that's James, that's George, and that's Danny. All four of them have got down this, and all of them run well. Team Scott, though, have a look. Team Scott, two of the four. Yeah, awesome points for Team Scott. So we know that uh, James Scott can run well. Jaden Murphy's a great runner. Danny Hart's always run well. Yeah, I think Danny Hart's a little bit probably underdone uh, for the back end of these races. You know he's going to be quick, but I'm not sure he's got the endurance that he once had at the moment. Oh, oh push and shove around the can. Oh, we he, love that. That's twice James Scott has been bullied out of the way around that can. Once from Cade Shy, once from Jaden Murphy. Rubbing is racing and the boys love it. Well done to uh, Jaden Murphy. But I think, you know... <laughs> 
to, without any DQs, that is another win for Team Scott. Geez, they're at the front of the field a lot, aren't they? They are. They are. And again, you know, I'm sure James doesn't mind, but I reckon he's saying to the boys, boys, why do you keep picking on me? What is it? Do I have hit me on my shoulder? Because that's uh, that's two in a row now. First it was Cade shot, uh, and uh, and then twice it gets happened. Right, I've got our winning team here, um, Team White. Got George Renman and James Scott coming in. Come over here, mate. I know you're tired. Um, boys, that was impressive. We talked about the run leg being super and um, super important. Uh, what did it go like? How, how, what, what's your what's your tactics off the start? Oh, just getting. Get in the water first, it's the main priority. Um, me and James did a great job of that. Yeah. Training partners. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was good. Had to leave from the start and then, you know, just play from here. Absolutely, and the home beach O'Rewa is very similar to conditions today, so it is really playing to your favour. Keep up the great work, boys. Keep smashing it. So as we see uh, off the start, a really strong start, but it was uh, Jack Kepper from uh, uh, Team McEwen that took off to the uh, left-hand side of the beach as they ran into the water. Almost paid off for him, gave himself a shot, uh, but it was Danny Hart and George Winman that took to the, went to the front of the field with a bit of a fight going on behind them. Those four guys, they got the, the benefit of working strong through the middle of the race and it became a sprint in four. Yeah, absolutely. And look, you've got to give ups to Jack Kepper because... You know, he knew that he wasn't the best runner, so he was thinking, what can I do here? And he made a choice, he backed it. Um, whether it came off or not, I, I'm not sure, but I'll tell you what, I'm really, I'm stoked for him and that he had a shot, and I think uh, more of our athletes need to do that. Points progression after 12 events. We're uh, two-thirds of the way through this competition, and Team Scott's still hanging out the front of the field. They're doing a great job winning a couple, but always been at the pointy end. Uh, Team Crawford, they were a little bit further back early on, so they may have uh, played a, a power play and got themselves into um, a clean second with Team Fluent. Team Falloon in third, uh, Team McEwen in fourth, and then we're still waiting for probably a couple of power plays to be played uh, by Team Irving and, and uh, potentially Team Clark. Yeah, well, definitely Team Irving. If you've got uh, Brianna Irving in your team, you are definitely jokering the women's sprint. And that hasn't happened yet, so we are waiting for their points to come up. All right, the women's board team, same as the men, uh, two athletes from each team uh, in a points competition. So we're going to have 16 girls on the line and some really strong teams in here. Um, we're still looking for those runners to come out the front end of the field because that little section at the uh, start line is still tough to get through. Yeah, and here they go. So we've got, uh, is that Maggie Robinson and Nika Pahima, Olivia Tukia. Some of the younger girls have gone to the front, um, and it's definitely a Nika Pahima. She's got her board first. Maggie Robinson second. They are going to have a slight advantage, and, and being down that southern end, I think it's a little bit shallower through that hole. So they are definitely going to have an advantage. So Nika Pahima hits that first wave. She's definitely out in front. Uh, Maggie Robinson just on her right hip. Um, and... Uh, and I think that might have been Freya Stolt just slipped in that hole and just didn't quite get to um, Anika's hip. Yeah, and that's a strong start from Team Crawford overall, actually, but that wave just stopped them, stopped them a little bit. Anika Bahima really had to um, jump off and then dive back on, and it's given the opportunity from the team, uh, Team McEwen, Yulia Padru and Kate McCarty, um, young athlete from uh, Lowell Bay, having a great little run through that there. And look at Yulia Padru going, man, she is strong on the board at the moment, more known as a ski paddler, but she's been paddling the board incredibly well recently. Absolutely, and so here we go, Yulia Padru... Um, moving through uh, with Kate McCarty on her inside. Maggie Robinson's going, do I really want to lead this out? I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, I think she's trying to get on the side wash and uh, making it really, really hard. Actually, I think that's Kate as opposed to Yulia taking the lead. So Kate McCarty out in front, Yulia on the inside, Maggie Robinson on the outside, Anika Pahima, and I think that might be Olivia Tukia on the inside there in her own water who hasn't had to deal with any of that pushing and shoving. And she's just come through and just got a big don't argue and she's popped out about five metres left. Yeah, really bunched up going into that first. We haven't seen a lot of that happening, but we are four wide going into the apex. Uh, and it is going to be, um, uh, well, it looks actually like Kate McCarty yeah, that's Kate gone McCarty. to the front of the field. So she's taken over the lead from her teammate, Yulia Padru, uh, pushed a little bit wide and it's given the opportunity for Maggie Robinson and Freya, Freya Stolt to actually jump up the inside going into that third can. Yeah, absolutely. So here we go. Kate McCarty... Uh, uh, Freya Stolt, Maggie Robinson pushing for home, but Freya Stolt, look, she is absolutely just flying on her stomach. Lay down 
uh, strength here. Just really got lots of speed. She's jumped back up on her knees now. Um, look at this wave in the, in the background. It, I think this is going to be something that might change the front. If you get on this wave, I think you win. Yeah, absolutely. And both these girls at the front of the field are great runners. Uh, we know that uh, Kate McCarty's got a hell of a lot of uh, endurance in her run. I think she did the fastest run time um, uh, at, at the uh, now, Monster. now Monster last year as well. So here they go. Here they They're go. pushing for this little bump. And Freya Stolt pushes down. It comes across and just shuts the door. Oh, it's, not, it's nothing personal, Kate McCarty, but I just don't want to be running against you. <laughs> Incredible effort there from Freya Stoll at the back end of that race. Uh, and look, we have a, a race on for about 10 on the, the second wave as well. It's going to be Kate McCarty in two, uh, but then a massive sprint finish for the minor money. And like we said, all day, all these points count. Yeah, and look at that. They are running. Olivia Tukia seems to be in the white top coming up uh, for Team Scott. Again, Team Scott, they managed to find themselves getting up there. Her Mine's teammate, Pippa 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 Nickel, yeah. Pippa Nickel has uh, finished off really strong too. But we'd have two black singlets, I think, across the line now. Uh, two oh, singlets from Team Crawford too. Who was that? Holy mac, was that Anika Bahima has just got. I'm going to find the play in the sandpit. We love a bit of push and shove. The boys are into it, the girls are into it. It doesn't matter who you are. A really strong finish there from Maggie Robinson as well. So it might actually be Team Crawford off the back of Freya Stoltz win and Maggie Robinson's strong showing that gets them across the line uh, for maximum points. All right, lots of excitement there for Team Crawford at the front of the field. Freya Stolt, all, always good to get across the line first, yeah. but to have your teammate come in close behind, that's perfect for Team Crawford. Yeah, definitely. No, it's a hard race with the start and the run, but me and Maggie both got out there near the front and it was good. Excellent. And uh, you had a bit of a fight coming back to the beach. It well, didn't have it your own way, but I saw the opportunity there when you both got on that front runner, you and the team, uh, the, the paddle, I didn't see who it was. Uh, from Team McEwen, but you just angled across and got it yeah. just in front just to make sure she didn't get down it. Yeah, no, just pushed down the wave hard and managed to get down on my own. Always good. Oh, good rubbing's racing, we love all of it, so congratulations and well done to Team Crawford. Thank you. So as we look at the, uh, the race highlights, uh, we saw off the front it was Maggie Robinson, Anika Pahima, Olivia Tukia going to the front early. That little wave just knocked them back a little bit. Um, I think it was Ruby McSweeney who was right there, just got hit a bit. Um, but in the end, it was Freya Stolt, uh, that third can. She stayed on her stomach, worked really, really hard, and ultimately she pulled down that wave by herself and made that run up the beach relatively manageable. So what are we, two-thirds of the way through uh, the co competing, Denny, and it's... Uh, it's very, very interesting. Team Scott uh, is definitely putting their foot forward to be crowned the champions of the Invitational Year 3. Yeah, I think we're getting to the stage now as well where the coaches are starting to think about the workload of their athletes and where who are the guys that are a little bit fatigued. Um, we know there's uh, there's not a lot to offer on the surf, so the people that have had multiple events uh, throughout the day with a lot of running are going to start to be hurting a little bit. So do you go with your initial plan? Do you thrash some of your elite athletes? Or do you go with Operation Fresh Legs? Yeah. and give some of the guys that have had a little bit more time off um, a chance to shine and maybe jump to the front of a field. Yeah, and, and vice versa. Like, like, are there some people that have fresh legs? They just haven't had much and they've gone, actually, this is I could be really good at here. And that's something that, that, that coaches are thinking about. They're also probably thinking about some of the iron men and women that still have to race. You know, is it worth putting them into some of these rescue relays when actually they're already just about cooked? And you saw with some of those men and women in that board race, there are some people that we would have expected to be at the front that are really finding it challenging at the moment. All right, we're going into the mixed rescue relay now. Second longest event of the competition, uh, other than the Taplin relay. This is a big one. Um, brings together our entire rescue portfolio. We have a board rescue first, followed by a tube rescue uh, with a drag finish as well. So six athletes, three guys, three girls. We're going to start with a full board rescue. Um, generally a male and a female will go out uh, and do a board rescue. They'll come back to the beach, tag off their 
tube rescue patient who will go out and uh, do a full swim and then they'll get uh, rescued by their tube swimmer and then finished off with a drag up the beach from uh, generally two of the beaches so a massive competition there's going to be lots of lead changes in this race and uh, probably a few decisions to be had around uh, where guys come in and out of the uh, water with this uh, little gutter that we've still got in front of us yeah and where you put your males and females you know like is there someone that's really good with fins and do you put them uh, as a rescue uh, do you is there you know the longer parts are the swimming parts obviously the two patient parts um, so do you put females or males there there's some really good conversations that I'm sure are going on with the coaches at the moment all right, so the uh, board rescue patients lining up for their swim out to the beach, and what we're seeing is we've got some female and some male swimmers. So uh, a couple of teams, looks like Team Scott, they're going to put George Remen up the front. Uh, looks like Team Falloon is going to chuck one of their male athletes up the front as well, try and get an early lead and then hang on to that at the back end of the race. Most of the other teams, they've got their female swimmers on the line, and they'll be rescued by a male uh, board paddler. So... Um, this is, we have seen the tactics all day, but we've uh, got an opportunity now for Team Scott to go to the front of the field and try and hang on. And away we go. And as you see those two uh, males down that southern end, so I think that's George Women and maybe it might be Braith Swanberg, I think, uh, there. So George has gone to the front. He's going to get over this wave, uh, get out and try and get as big a lead as he possibly can for his rescuer to come back and grab him. Yeah, we've seen the conditions come into play a little bit here. You see the uh, the people that were on the left-hand side of the field, lanes one, two, and three, still have that gutter to wade through, whereas George Wemmon on the right-hand side got a little bit more of a shallower bank, uh, got that little early advantage, uh, which is probably going to get no matter what, but it's really extended that advantage now. And you're seeing the thrash and dash getting out to the cans, giving his team the best opportunity uh, to get to this... Um, get their hand up first and get away. Here we see Lizzie Brennan for Team Falloon uh, lining up, waiting for her hand to go up. Uh, but it is going to be Team Scott, George Wimman that gets away first, and that's Pippa Nickel paddling the board, something that you might not have expected. No, but again, you know, maybe that's just about her fatigue or not. I mean, she's a great board paddler, but yeah, you might have expected her to be the opposite way and George to be board paddling and Pippa to be swimming. But again, whatever way, uh, it is good. And there's the first male, so that's Nat Fit. Uh, for Timo Fee that's gone. Yeah, see these guys are going to be trying to run down their female competitors. We see Hunter Robinson on the far Oi. side. Yeah, the boy's still having to negotiate that little um, gutter at the front. There's a bit of bounding going on, a bit of paddling, but it's the, the teams on the right-hand side, as you're looking out to see, that have got the most advantage uh, from that maybe a little bit shallow entry into the water. Yeah, so still it's going to be Team Scott with Pippa Nickel and George Wemmon. They're going to go in first. Uh, down the far side, that's Team Irving. Uh, team Ophie and Team Falloon are going to be third, fourth. But it is pretty close, so you'll see some differences. We've got Team Scott uh, up on their knees in the back, but the others at the moment are all on their stomach. So everyone has picked up, oh, and there's a wave coming. Here we go, trying to scratch down the front of it. Team Falloon really scratching hard, probably a little bit too far back. Team Irving gets down the front of it, so we've got two on the front wave. Team Irving in pink on the far side, a Team Scott in uh, white closest to screen as they come through this little gutter. A few skills come into play now, how you get up off the board and get away. And we've got, looks like, three, maybe four on the next wave. One oh, nose dive. One, yeah. One's out. But here we go, we've got Team Scott, George Wimmen, he's going to tag. He's at the front there. Is that look Alice Sutton, I think, that's gone out there swimming? Yeah, it was Alice Sutton. Everybody's favourite Sutton again out first and they're looking, look at that, how those girls have run through that first little gutter. Yeah. Alice Sutton really shallow on that part of it. The guys on the left hand side I think have got, and we'll see Zoe Crawford take off here, team captain for Team Crawford. Just that little bit of deeper water to get through which is making life a bit challenging for the guys in lanes one, two and three. Yeah, you see Zoe Crawford just falling over on that inside section. That's not something that Alice Sutton had to deal with on the far right hand side. And you can see it in the water. You can see where the sand is coming up you can see that shot particularly uh, where it's a little bit deeper, a little bit shallower parts of the beach and it's definitely made that southern end a little bit easier to, to navigate on the entry. Yeah, that's right. So Alice Sutton in white in the middle of the field. Uh, Team Irving in pink on the right-hand side had a great run into the water. And they've taken a slight lead, I think, as they go into uh, the, the changeover to set away their um, tube rescue swimmers. But you saw big Louis Clark standing there with his fins, and we know that he is going to be charging home. So it'll be interesting to see where Team Clark is. Are they close enough to put, team, to put uh, Louis in with a chance? 
Yeah, that was Connor Beamish that was uh, taking off for Team Scott in the white, chasing down our swimmer from uh, Team Irving in the pink. So really close to the front end of the field. Haven't seen a lot of Connor Beamish show so he might be playing Operation Fresh Legs, yep. but there's Louis Clark still on the beach. So that might be a bit far, I'm reckoning. Yeah, that could be a tough one. That could be a tough one. Louis Clark still standing on the Keeper. beach with Jack Keeper, and it looks like, yeah, they've got a little bit of work to do uh, to come into the front of this, but... As we see those uh, front swimmers start to get through that first wave, it does look like Connor Beamish has taken a slight lead for Team Scott. He obviously got his fins on nice and clean, and he's charging out to that uh, can to pick up Ella Sutton. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we probably would have said that Jack Keeper and Louis Clark are the best uh, fin swimmers we have in New Zealand. So for them to be going off um, at the back end is probably makes a real interest of a race because they are going to be coming home hard. But here we go. That is Connor Beamish. He has passed over. Team Irving have passed over. Um, Team Irving have let the patient clip in. Team, uh, Team Scott, here, Connor's done it. So that, look at that difference. That's probably given them five metres. Team Irving went in slightly second, but they've come out with a five metre advantage. And although Connor is going hard... Um, Oh, look at the direction. A little bit of misdirection oh. from Team Irving there. He didn't put his foot, head up and have a look. He ended up swimming almost straight across the beach rather than back to the beach, and that's opened the door for Team Scott. Connor Beamish with a straighter line back to the beach, and he's taken a body length. And that looks like big Tyron Evans uh, for Team Fee. He was flying at the back end there too. So he's coming up in third. So if Team Irving doesn't get their coordination and navigation right, they are going to be really hunted down by Team Fee for third. But it is Team Scott that are coming through. Connor Beamish, I think that's Matt Hughes, and I'm not sure who that other draw. I think it might be Alex Birmingham, um, are dragging for Team Scott. So they've got to drag uh, their patient all the way up and finish between the line. But Team uh, Scott are first, Team Irving second, and Team Ophie are in third place as we look at it at the moment. Massive long run. This is where it starts to hurt and when a bit of uh, uh, extra strength can come into the mix. So Team Irving not giving up at all. They're making a race out of it for sure. But once again, we see uh, Team Scott, little Ella Sutton. There's not much of her. Uh, she's going to be great to drag uh, across the line. And another win uh, for Team Scott. And look, at, look at Team Irving. The draggers have gone, that is enough. I'm not running any more distance than I have to. They get across the line and all of them fall over. Just buckled. Just buckled. Great result for Timo Fee coming through in third. And then Team Falo looks Falloon looks like they're in uh, fourth overall. Again, those teams on the right-hand side, lanes uh, five, six, seven, and eight, one, two, three, and four. And the lanes one, two, three, and four just probably didn't get the best of those uh, the opportunity with the conditions. But mate, that's surf. That's the right. That's the sport we race in. Absolutely. Make the most of it. Take your opportunities. And there we see we see the the teams that had Louis Clark and Jack Keeper. They're just coming through now. So yeah, they look they're great. Uh, fin swimmers but ultimately you need the rest of your team to put you in a place to make sure that you can use your great fin swimming ability. Yeah we saw that from Team Scott uh, and also Team Falloon they put their male um, swim pa or sorry, board rescue patients away first um, and reap the rewards of getting to the front of the field and dominating a uh, rot from the gun. And, and I guess in a, in a flat race like that where there isn't a lot of waves around, um, you know, being out front and putting pressure on everyone else um, definitely, for me, is something that I'd be looking to try and do. How cool is this? Team event, you know, representative event. Most of these guys race for different clubs, uh, but they've got the opportunity to come together with people that they don't usually race with uh, in a representative style event and um, throw down some great results. And you see that camaraderie starting to build on the beach. Yeah, it's definitely something beautiful about our sport. Here we go, the uh, winners of the uh, True Rescue Team, Scott, and uh, bringing it home. And then did most of the work herself, actually, Ella Sutton. Um, again, you've been at the point end of the field, this team, for most of the day, but this is a great way to get into some full-on team events. Um, yeah, it was fun. Coming up the beach being dragged, probably the hardest part, but <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, I think well, you guys got the, made the most of a good side of the uh, good side of the course, I think. But Connor, the opportunity to get out those long legs up and waiting, and then pull back a little machine like this as well is a pretty good opportunity. Uh, yeah, it's nice to have a small patient to bring home, but also good that the swim was quite short as yeah. well. <laughs> oh, well an, upper, an awesome race from uh, Team Scott. Almost led start to finish through George, who got uh, got them away on a good start. And uh, so congratulations. All the best for the rest of the day, guys. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. So Rescue uh, Relay, oh, what a great result. As you said earlier, Denny, you know, the ability to showcase all of those rescue uh, 
modes that we use here in uh, surf life saving and it was Team Scott from the start, they went out first, George Women led from the start and ultimately at the end, um, as they passed over to Alice Sutton, they were still leading. Yeah, great effort from Team Irving as well. They put themselves in the mix. You know, I think they'll be maybe lamenting that little bit of misdirection just yeah. after the two pickup. That might have hurt them and given their, you know, if those uh, um, Team Irving draggers, if they'd given another five metres or so, they are right in the mix of taking that race. Absolutely. So lining up now for the uh, male beach sprint, and this is a truly world-class field. Uh, in lane one, we've got Seven Mapu from Team Scott. In lane two, we've got Hunter Robinson uh, from Team Crawford. In lane three, we've got Cyril Sefton from Team O'Fee. In lane four, we have Jerram Sinclair from Team Irving. In lane five, Oscar Smith from Team Falloon. In lane six, we've got the old man Morgan Foster for Team McEwen. In lane seven, we've got Scott Cliff from Team Clark. And in lane eight, top of the field, we have Zach Johnson from Team Hart. And we're going into the blocks. Getting ourselves ready, looking for Morgan to get away first, but Oscar Smith would be my favourite. And they're away. Oh, someone down the bottom had a little bit of a slip. Oscar Smith has gone out to the front, and he is showing a clean pair of heels. So Oscar Smith in the middle. He's going out. Morgan Foster's running hard. Seven Mapu, I think, might have just got second. So I think it's uh, that'll be... Oscar Smith first. I think it was Oscar uh, Seven Mapu second, and Morgan Foster will be third. Yeah, Seven Mapu we disappointed with that. He did have a bit of a stumble, second or third stride in. Uh, didn't give, really give himself a chance against uh, the quality of Oscar Smith, but that was a class effort from Oscar Smith. As we see Seven Mapu just stumbling there again, second, third. He was right at the front of that field, uh, but any opportunity is going to be exploited by Oscar Smith, and that is an amazing finish from Oscar in the middle of the field. And then it was Hunter Robinson again. We've talked about him all day, but I think that was him coming through in fourth. Maybe Zach Johnson up the top there. So Hunter Robinson and Zach Johnson, um, you know, doing a really good job. Multi-talented athletes. All righty, winner of the uh, men's uh, beach sprint, Oscar Smith. And we understand with the Joker as well. So maximum points for Team Flown. Uh, that was a good hit out, Matt. Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Felt a bit longer than usual. But yeah, pretty mean. And uh, obviously racing against the guys that you usually train with, with Oscar and that in the, uh, the front end of the beach, could you feel them coming up on you? Uh, yeah, I could feel seven coming up on me in the last like 10 metres, but I just lift my legs up and yeah. Yeah, push on. And with the likes of Morgan Foster still going around, like he's been at the top end of beach sprinting and beach flags for the best part of 20 years plus, you know, to have guys like that still in the mix and still in the field, um, it's got to be a good challenge to try and take out the experienced guys. Uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive having someone you know, who's been doing it for that long at that level. And uh, yeah, he got me earlier in flags, but got him there, so yeah. Well, congratulations, mate, and well done on the power play. Thank you. So as we look at this uh, for the women's beach sprint, so we've got down the bottom, we've got Alicia Wilson. Second, we've got Abigail Moxon. We've got Riley Grills for three, Michaela Pocock in four, Jordan Grills in five. We've got uh, Bella Rose Mountford in six, uh, Anika Pahima in seven, and uh, I guess the favourite, Brianna Irving, all the way up there in eight. So it's a good field, this uh, woman's beach sprint, as we're looking forward to getting into the into the blocks. But you'd have to think that Brianna Irving up the top would be the favourite. And they're away. Brianna Irving, yes, she's got out. Jordan Grills as well. Michaela Pocock and Bella Rose Mountford in the middle there. But it's Brianna Irving. She is absolutely flying. Yeah, that has got to be uh, the reason that they, they put the um, joker on that race. Um, absolutely fantastic effort. Um, current New Zealand champion and uh, current Blackfin, um, that's why she's one of the best in the world. Yeah, she was, and, and, and to be honest, she won comfortably, didn't she? Have a look at this. She gets out quick. Jordan grills out, pops out pretty well as well. But actually, in the end, after 10 metres, there was already a couple of metres in front of Brianna Irving showing why she is the class sprinter in New Zealand at the moment. There's Jordan, Jordan Grills in two, Michaela Pocock coming through in three, Bella Rose Mountfoot in four, and then the rest of the field really close uh, for the minor placings. So great points there, and of course the joker for uh, Team Irving. Um, that's going to push them right up the front, and you'll see Abigail Moxon, just a young athlete, um, cracking a little athlete. She's going to be awesome in the beach arena for years and years to come. But those little opportunities where James Scott, or Team Scott, um, not as many points as they've had in some of the other events. Yeah, but as we said, you know, look, there are going to be ups and downs, and so 
Yep, maybe there wasn't as many points there, but she did the best she possibly can, and she was sprinting hard. And, and one point is all you need. You know, that might be what it is. And at the end of the day, um, you know, Team Scott would have picked their team. Tom Lowe, the coach of Team Scott, would have picked their team knowing what's going on. And, and Abigail Moxon, as you said, young, talented girl who's uh, done a really great job there amongst the best athletes in New Zealand. Well done, Brianna Irving. Two from two, the beach flags and the beach sprint double, but also the power play in that one as well. It's a good feeling. Yeah, pretty stoked with that run. Um, it planned out pretty well, yeah. So when you go into a race like that, knowing that the pressure's on you, you know, and it can be, a, it's got to be a mistake-free run, but do you feel like this, that is the best that you can put out or is there more to give for the rest of this year? Um, I think there's definitely more to give. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And leading into a world championship season, um, is there an opportunity now to actually peak going into nationals or are you going to be in that situation where you need to hold a little bit back and save a bit potentially for a, a selection in August, September? Um, I think I'll definitely try to peak around um, March just with track nationals and surf nationals and we'll just see from there what happens. Well congratulations and all the best to your team for the rest of the uh, event. Thank you. Alright, so after 15 events, we still see uh, Team Scott at the po at the front of the field on 87 points, closely followed by Team Falloon and Team Crawford. Uh, a little bit further back, but that middle uh, section of the field between 4, 5, 6 and 7, very, very close in terms of points with only three races to go. Yeah, absolutely. You'd have to think that Team Scott and Team Falloon have a little bit of an advantage in, in terms of... I think it's likely that they'll be the two winning teams unless something amazing happens with Team Crawford or Team O'Fee. But, but yeah, some really close racing and with three races to go, uh, we're looking forward to seeing what might eventuate. All right, we move into the Ironman race. And again, this is an Ironman race, but it's also a team's event. So two athletes from each team, 16 boys on the line. Uh, looking at Team Scott, the front of the field, they've got James Scott and George Winman, the, the two teammates from O'Rewa Surf Club. Jaden Murphy and maybe Kalani Gilbertson are going for, uh, no, it's not Kalani Gilbertson, it's going to be for uh, Team Crawford. Uh, but a good start again, and this is a long race. We're going to see some of the boys that are really going to take it out in the front. It is George Winman that's going to hit the can first, I think. Oh, maybe. Yeah, definitely. Maybe Jaden Murphy also there. Uh, putting a little bit of pressure on at the front of the race. But it's definitely Lockie Falloon on the outside. Um, George Winman going to the front early. Uh, interesting to see some of those guys. It was definitely a different speed. It's not like a, a ski race or a board race. It was a little bit more um, conservative, that run into the water. As we get a little bit more water on through this channel, it makes it a little bit more manageable or even, I reckon, now. Yeah, the tide is coming a little bit, so you can see those transitions have shortened up, which the guys will be more than happy about. Uh, but what it has been done is it's lengthened out these swim and board and ski legs as well. So th across the bar now, and starting to get into the swim. It is George Wenman from Team Scott that's leading out with Lockie Falloon uh, on his left-hand hip. And the guys that went a little bit further right to try and get around the outside of that, uh, um, that hole um, probably got a little bit more benefit than the guys on the left-hand side. Yeah, so I think that might be Jack Keeper that's uh, sitting there in third. So it's George Wenman, Lockie Falloon and uh, Jack Keeper just on his feet. So the two Omanu boys just tracking George Wenman. All three of them were junior Blackfins uh, in Riccioni uh, last year, so they know each other pretty well. Bit of push and shove. There's <laughs> no love lost when you're uh, competing for other teams, uh, opposite teams as well. So look at that first can. There's lots of people getting pushed out of the way. Bit of pushing and shoving, a few kicks to the face. Um, that's part of the sport that a lot of the guys love as well. Yeah, so I think that was Nathan Proctor and maybe uh, Ruben Crichton that went around that first can for um, Team O'Fee and Team Clark. But it's still George Wenman. He's just lengthening out this field. Um, he is a good swimmer, so he'll be looking forward to trying to... Um, really stretch it, make it a really hard race and Lockie Falloon, Jack Keeper just sitting behind, biding their time a little bit, thinking, well you can do a bit of work, we'll stay here, this is 15 minutes worth of effort, um, we don't want to use all our matches just off at the start. Yeah, and a team event as well, so uh, George Wren will be like, trying to get out the front and be a bit of a rabbit but he's also uh, thinking about where his teammate James Scott is as well and at the moment I think it's James sitting in mid-pack at the moment, not known for his swimming, in fact he might actually be right at the back of the pack <laughs> definitely not his, uh, um, his strongest leg, the swim leg, um, but he knows that if he gets close enough to get in uh, to the wave zone, then his board and ski leg will be strong enough to come through into the middle of the pack Here comes the swell though Boys looking over their shoulder, a couple of the guys have stopped and we're going to have a number of uh, athletes on this first wave. How many come down at two, four, six, eight, about ten on this first wave. So now it becomes a case of body surfing oh, skills as it just fills up a little bit and there's only two that have held it. 
Yeah, so I saw Nathan Proctor and Jaden Murphy come down the back end of that uh, uh, homeward journey, but they've just missed it. But it looks like, uh, who's that? Is that Jack? Joe Wilson. Joe Wilson. Joe Wilson from Team Falloon. Uh, always a bit of a jaggy. He loves a wave. He's a great body surfer as well. So there's Joe Wilson in orange from uh, Team Falloon. And I think it's Jack Keeper in black from uh, Team McEwen that have made the best out of that swell uh, with uh, George Wendland coming around in third. Yeah. And, and then, so that's a, it's a great effort from Joe Wilson. He is a good swimmer. Um, but Jack Keeper and Joe Wilson coming through as they head onto their boards. Jack Keeper, a really good board paddler. He'll be thinking, I want to try and stretch this field, make it really hard. If they get to me, then they're going to have to work really, really hard to get to me. Joe Wilson's going to think, Joe, I've got to get on George Wendman. I've got to get on Jack Keeper. You've got to work hard now. Nathan Proctor had worked really hard on that um, return home, but he just was a bit unlucky when that wave came through. So... Really good. We've still got George Wimmen. We've still got... Uh, uh, who did we have? Joe Wilson. Joe Wilson. Yeah, George Wimmen's transition was fantastic. So George Wimmen was first into the water on the ski. He picked his board up third, and he's already uh, up onto Jack Kepper's uh, sidewash. And, you know, his just entries and exits have been ex uh, just fantastic this whole day. They have. And Joe Wilson, unfortunately, just didn't quite get there. So now he's a bit of no man's land. He's... He's not on anyone's wash, and he's got Reuben Crichton hunting him down. So as we go through, Jack Keeper, he's worked to the front of the field. George Wimmen just sitting on his uh, right hip, just conserving some energy at the moment, thinking this is a long race. I'll tell you who I'm looking at as well. Reuben Crichton in four and Jaden Murphy in five. They're probably the two strongest ski paddlers in the uh, in the field, along with um, Taylor Chamberlain from Team Irving as well. But we know Jaden Murphy is a fit athlete, but he's a really strong ski paddler too, as is Reuben Crichton. So looking at those guys, they're in the fourth and fifth now, but I expect them to be a little bit further up by the time we get to the, uh, the end of this event. event. And, and again, you also had Lockie Falloon there too, and we know that he's a really good ski paddler. So you've got some really good ski paddlers hunting you down. So again, George Wimmen, um, Jack Keeper, they can't take the foot off the gas just yet. Yeah, Joe Wilson's looking a bit buckled, and he's kind of holding up that second group. Not that he's trying to block anybody, but I just don't think he's got the pace to get up there, and those guys uh, are going to have to paddle around the outside of him if they want to get anywhere near that front group. Here comes Jaden Murphy now. And George Wimmen, he really came around that third uh, last can and worked hard, put a little bit of a gap on Jack Keeper, but Jack Keeper's hanging in there. As we look back in the field a little bit, and it's got, um, we can see that group of four with uh, Reuben Crichton, Joe Wilson, uh, Jaden Murphy, they're really working hard. But here we go, oh, George Wimmen just hasn't quite, if he'd got that, could have been his race. But Jaden Murphy really working hard, he stretched that second group. But Jack Keeper and George Women are going to finish their board leg where they started their board leg, running together. Two, four, six, seven guys on the next wave. So those got everybody on that second wave, there's seven of them, and there's a couple of really strong ski paddlers. They are still in this event. It is George Women and Jack Keeper that are going to have the advantage going into the ski leg. Um, both quality ski paddlers, don't get me wrong, but I think the strongest ski paddlers are coming from that second wave. Uh, in particular, like we said, uh, Jaden Murphy and uh, probably Reuben Christen in there. Yeah, and I guess some of the boys will be thinking now, what's my, what's my, what do I want to do here? If I'm uh, George Wimmen, he's got a little bit of a gap. I really work hard in this entry. And if the guys are going to get to you, well, then make it hard. Make them have to get to you and have to uh, burn lots of matches to get there. There's George Wimmen, he picks up his ski. Jack Keeper's picked up his ski. Um, Jaden Murphy's picked up his ski. Yeah, we've got two athletes there in blue. So Ruben uh, Crichton and Tyron Evans, yeah, from uh, um, Team Fee. They're right in the mix here from a team's perspective. Um, we also have two teams from Lock uh, Team Falloon. So Lockie Falloon and Joe Wilson. They're right in there in that front group as well. As, as George Ruben hits that first wave, Jaden Murphy goes over it. Uh, for me, I'm looking at Jaden Murphy. I, I, I feel like he's got a lot of freshness in his legs. I feel like he is the guy that potentially is going to be the big mover here. Yeah, look at Tyron Evans too. Like really good spot for Tyron Evans. He could get dragged around right to the front of the field here. Um, and Ruben Crichton as well really put in a top 
20 double strokes off that uh, once he got on his ski and put himself in a really cool position. Um, one back inside run going into the uh, apex, uh, going into the first ski can. And there we see Jaden Murphy. He's moved to the front. George Weeman gave him plenty of room. And here comes Jaden. But as you said, Ruben Crichton on that most inside pot spot. He is working really, really hard. If he gets 20 strokes and he can just get up on Jaden's inside wash, that's going to make his, his return home trip that much easier. A great effort from Jaden Murphy, but I'm looking for his partner as well. Where's his teammate? Probably a little bit further back now, so that's not going to help them necessarily. Teams Crawford, Team Crawford's overall points. Um, you know, we same same with George Winman. He's looking for James Scott, who looks to be back in about eighth or tenth at the moment. James Scott, so that might not help. Um, for me, it is Timo Fee with two boys up the front there. Uh, Tyron Evans and Ruben Crichton sitting in fourth and uh, third and fourth at the moment. Uh, they're the ones looking at maximum points in this event. Absolutely. But it is Jaden Murphy. He's stretching this field. It looks like he has broken the cord a little bit of George Wimman. So George Wimman and Reuben Crichton chasing him down. Tyron Evans in fourth. But Jaden Murphy, he's put his head down. He's, got, he's losing his neck and he is stroking hard to come home. He's got a little run that George Wimman's just sort of sl slid off the back of. But George Wimman can probably pick this up. If he picks this up, he has finished the race. Yeah, incredible paddling there from Jaden Murphy. Eh? At the back end of a race, to, have, to be able to get your racing up that high and keep the power on is just fantastic. Uh, fantastic conditioning for this time of the year, for December, to be conditioned that well is uh, really, really impressive. Um, but he has stretched this field. Remember that he only went in, I don't know, I think he was fourth or fifth when he hit his ski? To then come through the field and drop them by that amount is an incredible paddle. So congratulations, Jada Murphy. Wrap it up. You're all done. Uh, but from a, a team points perspective, again, looking back through the field, trying to find his teammate, doesn't mean that Team Crawford's going to take these maximum points. No, it is. So well done, Jaden Murphy. He's going to get up and just cruise up to the line and take the individual line honours for the open male Iron Man, but as you say, Danny, it looks like it'll be Timo Fee with Ruben Crichton uh, running up for second with uh, Jordan, George Wimman and Tyron Evans, who's going to come through in fourth. Um, so there it is, Jaden Murphy, he'll cross the line first. George Wimman is just going to stay, I think, stay for second. Ruben Crichton will come third, Tyron Evans fourth, and that will mean Timo Fee will win the male team's Iron Man. There's some broken human beings as they come across the line there. Lockie Falloon, probably a little bit further back than he would want going into uh, that uh, ski league in the position that he was in. Um, but that's uh, the quality of this kind of racing now when you've got athletes of the, the level of uh, Lockie Falloon uh, having to settle for an eighth or a tenth. Um, you can just shows that the, the depth and quality of field that we've got in the Ironman race in New Zealand at the moment is um, quite fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, like a young guy, Tyron Evans, first year under 19, coming through in fourth. And... That's kind of what it's been over the last couple of years, those young guys really um, biting at the heels of the older dogs. All righty, we've got Jaden Murphy here, winner of the Ironman. Mate, uh, you've had a pretty uh, strong start to the season after having a shot at the trials and spending a bit of time in Australia. But going into that last ski league, you're sort of sitting at the bit, or second wave coming off the board. Did you back yourself to go to the front on the ski? Uh, yeah, for sure. No, it's my strong point, so I was just like, you know, get in, have a crack. Don't know until you go, so yeah. It's a strong field, and like, how taxing are these uh, transitions been throughout the day? What have you got left in your legs for the last one? Oh, not a lot. It's pretty hard. It's um, yeah, one of those things. You think you're going fast, then you look at other people, and you're just like, oh, I'm not actually running that fast. It just hurts. But um, yeah, it's good. Well, mate, it's been a really strong start to the season. We look forward to seeing what you can pull together back end of uh, March. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right, just going through the highlights of this race, and again, a number of uh, lead changes throughout this event, but it did show that you did have to be at the point end of the field, and it was George Winman that really took it to the field right off the gun. Yeah, he did, and, and uh, this was the point for me. You know, there was a couple of boys really coming home hard, but that little wave just just came up. Jack Keeper uh, got the most of it uh, and, and allowed him to skip free with George Winman, and those boys were, were leading uh, as we came off the board. Yeah, those entries and exits uh, into and out of the water have just been crucial all day. And like, we've seen some, a little, maybe a little bit of fatigue setting in as we get to the back end of this competition. Uh, guys have been around the course a number of times, uh, but that ski leg for me from uh, Jaden Murphy was absolutely outstanding. Uh, incredible conditioning, incredible strength, um, and uh, a really well-executed race. Well, I think the reality is I, I think that's probably 
an example of why he is the best ski pedaling Ironman we have in New Zealand right now. Um, and he runs really good as well. So again, in this field, um, he was the guy, he's shown again that uh, last league ski, um, he, he goes pretty hard. You're gonna have to be pretty good to beat him and really looking forward to the likes of Joe Collins and, and Corey Taylor coming back and seeing where Jaden fits with those boys. So as we're getting ready for the uh, for the women's Iron Woman, uh, another really quality field, and I think for me over the last couple of years, one of the really interesting races that we've had at the Invitational has been always been this female uh, Iron Woman, missing the likes of Claudia Kelly and Olive Pierce this year. But again, that'll be an opportunity for one of these young, up and coming athletes to really put their foot forward. Yeah, and what we're seeing is a real good opportunity for some of the uh, the young athletes to see what they're made of and actually see how they're going against the older athletes. So um, by no means a, um, a lower quality field, it's a really high quality field, um, but plenty of difference in terms of the age gaps to some of these athletes as well. Yeah, as we're coming to the line, here we go. Again, you'll see the start is really, really important. This looks like Freya Stolt going to the front. Uh, Lucy Stroud, that looks like as well, going to the front. So again, so uh, Ruby McSweeney, oh, there's been a bit of a fall as we go around that first can. It seems to be that first turning flag has been a bit tough for the girls today. Yeah. And have a look, we've got uh, one of our athletes going right off to the right to avoid that hole. Um, that's going to be uh, Ella Sutton, Sutton, yeah, from Team Scott. So she's been watching what's going on. She hasn't had to duck dive at all. You see the girls from Team Floon on the left-hand side. They're all duck diving through that deep water, and Ella Sutton has run around the outside of everybody in shallow water and gone straight up to second. So that's incredible no, um, <laughs> uh, tactics um, and probably some really good advice from uh, maybe her dad or maybe her coach on the beach before that race. Yeah, probably the coach. Eh? Let's go with that. Uh, but yeah, amazing effort, Ella. You know, young girl just clearly showing that experience that you don't have to be old to be experienced and she's done a really great job there but it looks like it got four wide so we've got Alice Sutton there uh, leading I think it was Lucy Stroud on, on the ins on the beside her and Pippa Nickel Pippa Nickel in the middle of the field now you know she went pretty straight off the start line she went through a bit of deeper water but just showing her strength uh, as a straight up swimmer and gone straight to the front of the field and turned into a bit of a V formation uh, in behind her so Pippa Nickel it is uh, from Team Scott leading out or maybe it's not maybe it's actually uh no, it's black. That's a black mate. Is that Kate McCarty? Kate maybe? or Talitha McEwen? Talitha, no, I don't think it's Talitha. I think it must be Kate. Talitha usually has a black cap. Um, so if you're not wearing a black cap, Talitha, then it could be you. But that's uh, that's definitely Team McEwen out in front. Pippa Nickel on the outside there, and Team Crawford, Zoe Crawford. Uh, so the two uh, second and third, and Alice Sutton, that early front runner, she is in fourth. Yeah, I think that's Talitha with uh, Ella in uh, fourth equal there. So a great start from uh, Kate McCarty then, uh, or from Team, McC team uh, McEwen going to the front of the field. A really awesome swim. She's really stretched out this field now. One, two, three, four um, boy lengths from uh, first to last uh, while we come into that swim league. But as we saw with the men, you know, the, the winners came from the very strong craft athletes and the ski paddlers in particular. And there is a couple of very strong ski paddlers in this female uh, crew as well. As we see Talitha McEwen coming up on the left-hand side and pushing up into that top three. Yeah, well, and she's a long-distance freestyler, so, so you know the back end of her uh, swim league is always going to be strong. But this is an amazing swim from Kate McCarty. Is she going to be able to pull down this? She is not quite going to get down it, but she is swimming outstandingly well. To be, to be gapping Pippa Nickel and Zoe Crawford is an amazing effort, but it's Alice Sutton, Pippa Nickel. Oh, oh, Zoe Crawford got Zoe down Crawford it. Zoe Crawford and yeah. Pippa Nickel have both got down it. Unfortunately for Kate McCarty, she's led the whole way and she slipped under that. And Alice Sutton also. So it's Zoe Crawford and Pippa Nickel. They're going to make the most of this. Pippa Nickel still with her head down, holding her breath. And Zoe Crawford up and running. But it'll be Pippa Nickel. She'll get to her feet first. Uh, she'll be running up the beach. Zoe Crawford, if it was me, I'd be trying to just push up onto Pippa. And I don't want to... You don't want to jump onto this board league and have to do it by yourself. You want to jump onto Pippa Nickel and get Pippa to drag you as much as you, around the course as much as you can. Young Alice Sisson was coming out in uh, third and it looked like Kate McC McCarty had uh, held on to fourth uh, despite leading so well in the front part of that race. Uh, but Pippa Nickel, gee, she's had a couple of great seasons in the younger age groups and now starting to assert her dominance uh, into the open division as well. 
So Pippenickel goes through in one. Zoe Crawford uh, goes through in two. Zoe has just been uh, over to the German Cup recently, so she's got a really strong swim league, but probably hasn't had the opportunity to do as much in the transition parts of the event. No, definitely not so much, but you know, she's a great racer, and she'll be doing everything she can. And there you goes Talitha McEwen. She's gone round. So remember we talk about this. This is a team's format, so Talita has uh, people in front, she has Kate McCarty just in front, she'll be thinking I need to be as far forward as I can but it's still Pippa Nichols, she'll pop over that one, Zoe Crawford, she's going to headbutt that and go through it, Alice Sutton around the other side with Kate McCarty. Again Alice Sutton pushing a little bit further right than um, uh, some of the other girls and probably making the best of that as well so um, you know that Alice Sutton's got amazing skills and even though the, the surf's not big uh, it's big enough to just stop you if you get it wrong and just lose a bit of momentum and during an Ironman that can hurt but look at Pippa Nickel extend this lead now she got through that um, little shore break nice and clean and now she's just blitzed it that's got to be 40 metres uh, worth of lead Absolutely and Alice Sutton Hunting her down with Kate McCarty just on her bat wash. It did, the one thing I will say, those Ella and Kate that went uh, down a little bit further south, they definitely had to come back this way. So that's going to add, and maybe that's what's allowed Pippa to stretch a little bit, is that back part of this, w this way out. Her, Ella had to come back, Ella and Kate had to come back, and that's just stretched this lead a little bit. But it's Pippa Nickel. She jumps down into her stomach, giving her legs a little bit of uh, time to recover, and she heads al along the back of this board string. Alice Sutton staying on her knees, really working hard. She's trying to do two things. She's trying to get reduce that gap to Pippa. She's also trying to see if she can get Kate off her back tail. Yeah, it's a, it's a good it's a decision that, um, I don't know if it's going through Ella's head at the moment because if she goes too hard now and drags the rest of the field through to Pippa, she can actually do some damage to the team event. So a bit of a 50-50 call for Ella. Do you actually push hard and get up to the back of your teammate and potentially drag uh, the competitors with you or do you let them do the work and um, you know work for more of a team result as opposed to an individual result? At the moment I don't think it really matters. I just think that Kate's really trying to hang on to Ella and uh, Ella's youthful uh, enthusiasm or youthful in energy is getting her right through this field. And here comes a wave. I don't think Kate's going to get it, but it's Ella going to be able to pull down it. Because if Ella can pull down that, then Pippa, no, Ella can't. And Pippa's just pulled off the one in front. So here we go. You can see that long uh, period swells are, are making a real interesting environment here. Pippa pulls down that first one. It looks like Ella will pull down the one behind. And as you said, what happens now? You've got the two Team Scott athletes out in front. Are they happy with first and second? Or does Alice Sutton want to get first? And that's the question that you're asking yourself. Well, what we know is that she's a Sutton, and so she's a competitor, and she just wants to win every single race that she goes into. So uh, for me, I think Alice Sutton's looking at that, just going, I've got the opportunity to to get on the podium of a major um, national event right now. So she's not holding back and waiting for anybody else. She's going to try and chase down her teammate. But, you know, they're a really good opportunity here for Pippa Nichols. She looks strong throughout the day. She's had a lot of races, though, I think, so she may be starting to fatigue a little bit. Absolutely. Pippa has had a massive workload. And, again, probably Ski is one of the of her three legs is the one that she's probably the most inexperienced with. So it will be interesting. You can see she's fatiguing. She's tired. Alice Sutton, it's what happens when you're second. You know, you're really excited. As we see, Bree McCout and Freya Stolt come through with... Uh, Sophie Petro. Sophie Petro, absolutely. So a couple of the Midway Juniors, uh, Midway Junior girls in that top five, or top five, top six. So, um, you know, what uh, Jack Gavin's been doing down at that Midway um, with that Midway crew has been uh, really, really impressive uh, the last couple of seasons. And you see the results starting to come through here. But Pippa Nickel, you'd almost say that um, it's done and dusted now. She can probably um, kick back and relax, knowing that um, you know she's got a teammate in behind her. But you'd say that she could probably win it from here. Yeah, absolutely. Just be nice and stay calm, uh, and be nice and consistent and efficient through this bit. So we've still got Pippa Nickel. Actually, it's sort of everyone's sort of spread out a little bit here. It's got Pippa Nickel in one, Alice Sutton in two, Kate McCarty's kind of got her own water, and even back there in uh, third and fourth with Freya Stolt and Bree McCow, they're, they're not looking for any wash either. So, Sophie Petro as well, they're, we're all in their own water at the moment. 
Yeah, looking uh, interesting to see how um, uh, Bree McCowick goes. She spent a fair bit of time over um, with the Northcliffe uh, crew, uh, the girls of Northcliffe uh, under Naomi uh, Flood, and um, you know, really seeing, starting to see the benefits of spending a fair bit of time over there after training, you know, by herself um, out of uh, Waihee for a number of years. Um, but a great girl, um, doing some really cool things over in um, Australia and uh, looking to make the most of it in, back in the New Zealand uh, domestic scene. Yeah, so really interesting. You can see that. As we're on that high shot, we saw that group that actually is working together. I think that was um, Lizzie Brennan and Keanu O'Fee. They were sitting in that next group that are definitely trying to hunt down that, that Sophie Petro, the back of that other group. So you can see it on the high shot here. We see Keanu O'Fee pushing to the front there. Uh, Lizzie Brennan on the outside. Um, they're trying to work to get up to that group of Sophie Petro uh, and... Uh, and that group in front, but it's still, it's uh, definitely Pippa Nickel. She's uh, making every post a winner out front there. She's got own, her own water. Alice Sutton just getting a little bit of a run off this one. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much she can come up. Oh, She's another deaf. bigger wave, another bigger wave. There's an oh, opportunity the for Ella Sutton here. Oh, here we Pippa go. Pippa Nickel needs to get down. I don't think she's going to get down this front one, so an opportunity for Ella Sutton. She's looked behind her three or four times now. The opportunity is there, and if Ella Sutton gets the power down right now, she's going to be able to pull onto this front wave potentially with her teammate, um, Pippa Nickel. Here we go. She's working really, really hard. You see the front of that ski popping up. Come oh, on, Ella. Just, no work, Ella. Doesn't quite oh, work. Oh, doesn't quite do it. And Pippa Nickel says, thank you very much, because that would have been... Oh, she had a misstroke. Oh. Misstroke oh. from Pippa Nickel. She's opened the door again. Oh. Another chance for Ella Sutton. You just saw Ella Sutton get all excited. She was like, oh, now, now, no, no, I'm not. So here we go. The front two are going to finish on the same wave, and it's going to be a run up the beach. Pippa Nickel and Ella Sutton. What a great effort from Alice Sutton. She's put herself right back in the mix here. And you look, Pippa Nickel, she's had a massive day. She's probably looking across at her teammate, just going, no, do I really want to win this? Do I have the energy? Or she, should I just let have it? She's going to have a shot. She's definitely had a shot. Absolutely flying. I think Pippa Nickel's gone, second's okay. Yeah, second is okay. Alice, Alice Sutton. What an incredible race from Lyle. What is she? She's 16 years old or still in the under 17 division. Um, an incredible uh, result from uh, one of uh, the future, one of New Zealand's best, brightest stars for the future. Absolutely. Take a bow, Alice Sutton. That was an impressive effort. You saw just as she missed that wave, there was kind of a bit of a head went back and she was like, oh. oh massive finish at the end there. Freya Stolp oh. just getting the nod over Bree McCowart, yeah, from uh, Team Irving. But look at the girls are absolutely buckled. Teammates, high fives all around because they know that regardless of the peop what the result was across the line, Team Scott is going to take maximum points from that and probably extend their lead at the front of this uh, point score. We said it at the start, Danny. Like that, this woman's f that female's iron person ha every year has been really, really good. And and there was another example, just a really great race. Fans of New Zealand Surf Life Saving will know the Sutton name from years gone by with uh, Matt being one of the uh, pr the prominent Ironmen of uh, 10, 15 years ago. Um, but now to see his daughter come through and uh, take over that mantle uh, as the most successful Sutton Iron person, um, well and truly deserved. And uh, we're looking forward to many more years of Ella Sutton being at the front of Iron Woman races. All right, we, maybe we can call it a coming-of-age situation for Alice Sutton, uh, your first Open Iron Woman victory, I think. Congratulations, mate. What an amazing effort. Oh, thank you. You know, I had a bit of a mixed bag yesterday, so kind of wanted to show up for myself a little bit more today. And chasing your teammate down, Pippa, you uh, had a massive lead. You are going really strong. The waves just didn't quite fall your way, but how cool to see your little mate come through and uh, join you at the front of the field. Oh yeah, definitely a relief when I see Ella on that wave. I wouldn't have wanted to sprint anyone else up the beach. So I'm so happy for Ella and us as a team. So go Team Scott. Woo! Yeah, and I just want to say as well, there was a little bit of an emotional moment, a big hug for Dad down there. <laughs> Obviously Dad being one of the Ironman greats from New Zealand and uh, perhaps this is the start of an opportunity to take over that mantle as the uh, the best Sutton Iron woman in history. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Been working hard with Dad a lot. So it was good to finally get a win. Yeah. Congratulations guys and well done to Team Scott. So as we look at the highlights, plenty of uh, lead changes as we went throughout this race. It was uh, Kate McCarty that led out from the front 
and uh, really took this race to the uh, to the field, pushed a little bit further um, south than the rest of the girls and smashed that swim leg. Uh, but then we saw that wave come through. Zoe Crawford and Pippa Nickel put themselves into the front of the event and then it became a bit of a drag race from that point on. Absolutely, it did. And again, really managed, it was about managing and conserving energy at that stage, wasn't it? Because it is, we said, we've said it a few times, long period swells, um, pretty slow, so you're going to have to work really hard and can around some parts of the race and so yeah as you said Pippa got up first with Zoe um, really tried to stretch it out um, I thought she did a really great job uh, the, the difference was that I thought Alice Sutton probably managed her race a little bit better you know she you, we talked about it she went on that she came a little bit narrow uh, had a little bit more running um, and then we got to the ski league and it was Pippa Nickel where we thought at this stage that probably the horse had bolted. We thought that maybe it was done, but no, Ella Sutton stayed in the game. She fought all the way to the end and ultimately she got up with a little bit more momentum and ran hard to the end and uh, she was the victor on the day. All right, and as we wrap up the uh, Invitational, it's been a sensational day at one of the best venues in New Zealand for racing, surf life saving, Whangamata on the Coromandel Peninsula. Um, an incredible day, and um, you know the racing has been red hot, but as we've said all day, uh, consistency is the key, and Team Scott, led by the captain James Scott, uh, absolutely outstanding with a, a final point score of 110 and a commanding victory over Team Falloon in second on 93. Team Ophie in third on 91, just two points back. Again, another two points back to Team Crawford. And then we had Team McEwen, uh, Team Irving and Team Clark. And then uh, Danny Hart uh, at the back end of the field um, after losing a, a, uh, the number one draft pick um, after race one, which would be disappointing for, for Team Hart. But that put them under a bit of pressure. Um, look, we're a, a few years into this event now. It's just getting from strength to strength. And um, once again, to Team Scott, congratulations on a sensational victory. Yeah, I think we talked about it all day, uh, Danny, that, that consistency was the key, wasn't it? You know, consistency of, uh, of effort and ultimately consistency of outcomes. And I wonder, uh, as Tom Lowe was thinking about the team that he was picking for Team Scott, whether he was thinking about um, runners. Because what it did look like to me was that Team Scott was always there or thereabouts as we entered the water. So, yeah, look, you can't control everything. But what you can control is you can control your effort and you can control your technique and and for me, Team Scott was always there or thereabouts, and that for, that is something that I think should be celebrated. And all the other coaches will be going, how can I make sure that for next year's Invitational, that I've got athletes that are going to put themselves somewhere near the front. Well, congratulations again to Team Scott. Thank you very much to Surf Life Saving Northern Region and all the officials that are involved in the running of this event. Um, an amazing day of competition and one of the best venues uh, in New Zealand, and we look forward uh, to seeing you again next year and for the Invitational.